Shen Jinghong heard a voice asking if he was ready to answer the call of his country and become a brave warrior of his state. Without waiting for an answer, the voice impatiently asked again, Is he ready? Again, there was no answer. The voice called his name displeasedly. Shen Jinghong looked ahead in shock. He stood in front of a rectangular gray table, behind which sat two men in military uniform. They were holding white sheets of paper in their hands. There was a sign on the table with the words recruitment point. Shen Jinghong was wearing a white turtleneck, blue crop trousers, and a blue coat with gold trim. He looked at the soldiers with wide eyes in bewilderment. Shen Jinghong indignantly wondered, numerous types of monsters have already invaded the front, and people have only started recruiting into the army now? Then he looked around and saw that he was standing in a large area paved with gray tiles. There were many tables, at which sat two men in military uniform, holding white sheets of paper in their hands. There were long lines of people reaching these tables. Shen Jinghong noticed a propaganda poster on which was written a call to go to defend the motherland and become honorable warriors. Shen Jinghong excitedly realized that he had been reborn. He returned from the battlefield. Shen Jinghong remembered how he had previously stood in military uniform and held a weapon. With a joyful smile, he told the guy with red hair standing opposite him that when he was on the battlefield and eventually got the opportunity to hold a machine gun in his hands, he would give him the moon guard. A guy with red hair, dressed in a military uniform, smiled widely and raised his hand with a clenched fist. He said that Shen Jinghong is getting taller and stronger. He will definitely become famous in the future. Then Shen Jinghong remembered how military helicopters were circling over the huge purple octopus on the battlefield. One of the helicopters was damaged and was burning with a bright flame. The monster held in its long tentacles several frightened military men who were screaming desperately. In addition to military uniforms, the military wore protective helmets and body armor. They looked at the monster doomedly, awaiting their inevitable death. The monster looked at them, his eyes flashing predatorily. On the ground, Shen Jinghong and the guy with red hair were watching. Shen Jinghong resolutely clenched his fist and grabbed a bundle of dynamite. He got out of his hiding place and ran decisively towards the monster. A guy with red hair ran after him. The monster, noticing Shen Jinghong, furiously waved its tentacles and threw him aside. Shen Jinghong lay defeated on the ground. A guy with red hair leaned towards him worriedly. He said with excitement that old Shen was more talented than him and had unusual abilities deep within him. He took a bundle of dynamite with his hand and resolutely said that he would become cannon fodder for the sake of their family and let him remember this and definitely take revenge. Shen Jinghong raised his head in alarm and saw a guy with red hair quickly running towards the monster. Then he jumped high and attacked the monster. There was a powerful explosion. Everything around was engulfed in hot flames. Shen Jinghong also remembered how, after a while, the army of monsters watched as an armed army of people approached them. Military planes were flying in the sky, many infantrymen were walking along the ground, and military vehicles were driving. At the head of the army of people was Shen Jinghong, who held a sword in his hand. Behind him stood a large army of armed soldiers and several missile launchers. He looked decisively in front of him towards the monsters, whose eyes glowed with red furious fire. These were huge lizards and dragons. They bared their huge fangs predatorily, preparing for battle. One of the monsters said that the humans only had a hundred thousand people left, but they were interested in many species at the front, of which there were about one hundred million. He added angrily, let them not think that they can capitulate and survive. The lowest race is not worthy of life. Then the monster shouted menacingly, let them die. Shen Jinghong stuck the tip of his sword into the ground and shouted angrily, Although humanity has lost, they are hybrids living in water and have not yet won. From now on, people will have no light. But let the monsters hear the last cry of the great power. The monster's eyes flashed angrily. Shen Jinghong smiled maliciously and said, Let them get a hundred thousand nuclear bombs. He raised his hand, which contained a small device with a red button. Shen Jinghong placed his thumb on the button and pressed it. There was a powerful explosion, visually reminiscent of a mushroom. Many such fiery mushrooms burst into flames. The entire globe was on fire. This fire could be seen even from space. 
Shen Jinghong looked ahead in shock as he came out of his memories. An alert appeared before his eyes. It was written there that something had been discovered. The owner had completed rebirth. The Shenyan system was beginning to bind. The system provides the owner with at least ten directions for the development of events, providing him with choices. Half of the skills are at the highest level, and the outcome on the battlefield can be changed. First, you can control animals and tame millions of monsters. Second, you need to fight to kill invisible spirits, create a powerful battle formation, and wipe out alien races from the face of the earth. Third, he needs to kill invisible spirits, put aside his emotions, become a blood god, and his combat power will increase significantly. Fourth, you need to keep the spirits as soldiers in the Dragon Kingdom, summon famous generals and reappear in the world. Silence hung in the air. There was a sound of a fist hitting the surface of the table. Shen Jinghong looked in front of him in surprise and saw a military man who, with a dissatisfied expression on his face, said that he had been standing here for five minutes. The military man asked not to interfere with their work, and asked again, Does Shen Jinghong agree to join the army, standing up for the defense of his homeland? Shen Jinghong thought about it, and the military man looked at him in bewilderment, waiting for an answer. Shen Jinghong smiled sweetly and said no, he refuses. The people behind him opened their mouths in shock. The men in military uniforms opened their mouths in shock. Meanwhile, the commander asked the question, What? The commander stood in front of Shen Jinghong and clenched his fists. He looked carefully at Shen Jinghong, who was not expressing any emotion and standing confidently in place. The commander clenched his teeth and, grimacing, began to write something in the folder. He held the edge of the folder tightly with his hand and silently continued to write something down there. A moment later, the commander looked up, filled with undisguised anger, and Shen Jinghong exclaimed, He is a fourth-year student at the Imperial University. The commander added that his physical training was five stars, and the rest of his subjects were also five stars. He asked the question furiously, opening his mouth wide and pronouncing every word clearly. So why, with such data, does he not want to join the army? The commander put down the folder with Shen Jinghong's application form with all his strength and pressed it very hard with his palm. This made a dull sound. The sun half illuminated the table and the folder with the sheet. The commander angrily pointed his hand at the windows of the building and shouted that he had always been a leader in his own university. So why did he intend to remain a deserter in the main choice in life? Shen Jinghong stood motionless and listened carefully to the commander's scolding. He silently watched this with a menacing look, his lips tightly pressed together. After a moment, he turned around and began to leave. His cloak began to flutter to the sides from the quick and sudden movement. The men in military uniform clenched their fists and angrily hit the table, which was not fully illuminated by the sun. The guys who carefully watched Shen Jinghong turn around and begin to leave thought that he was a deserter and refused to go to the front. The military men watched Shen Jinghong's retreating back with dissatisfied faces. At this time, Shen Jinghong walked next to a guy in a white t-shirt who had a toothpick in his mouth. The guy in the white t-shirt looked contemptuously behind Shen Jinghong, who was walking with his head down. He thought with a grin that Shen Jinghong pretended to be decent every day. But in fact, he was just a guy who didn't know how to do anything, who did nothing but make himself look like a fool. Shen Jinghong walked forward with confident steps, placing his hands in the pockets of his black cloak. His gaze was serious and unwavering. The girls in the crowd grimaced angrily and clenched their fists. The guy standing next to them opened his mouth slightly in despair and disappointment. A woman's voice said, she thought that Shen Jinghong had a bright future ahead of her. She didn't expect him to be so soft-hearted. The girl raised her index finger up with displeasure and, rolling her eyes, said that it was good for her that she did not confess to him, because now she would be ashamed. Shen Jinghong looked ahead disdainfully. The people behind him seemed to be burning with dark energy. They waved their hands contemptuously and looked in his direction. Shen Jinghong had the impression that he was walking in a corridor filled with ghosts with white, wide-open mouths and eyes. It was as if he was coming from a dark tunnel closer to a light and bright exit. Shen Jinghong walked past the crowd and began to approach the path, shrouded in thick bushes. Someone came out from the crowd and exclaimed that Shen Jinghong has some kind of plan. 
This same voice turned to the people and exclaimed that they knew nothing. He added that those who do not join the army must still support work on the front lines from the rear. He angrily exclaimed that Shen Jinghong would be much more useful than them even in the rear. The crowd silently continued to stand in place, pressing their hands to the sides of their bodies. Suddenly Shen Jinghong stopped. His cloak began to fray in the wind again, as did the belt tied around the middle. Shen Jinghong looked up in delight. The guys behind him opened their mouths in shock, looking forward in surprise. The military at this time opened their mouths and mentally thought that going to serve was an honor for the rest of their lives. They mentally began to reason, he is a person who can achieve success in all subjects and areas and should understand this. They asked the question in their minds, did he suddenly realize everything? The guy in the white t-shirt rolled his eyes with displeasure and wondered if the cowardly kid had changed his mind. He assumed that this was probably so that he would not lose the girls from the group. The guy in the white t-shirt clenched his teeth in displeasure, looking sideways to the side. Shen Jinghong smoothly turned his head and looked back. His back was brightly illuminated by the sun's rays. Behind him in the crowd stood his comrade from his past life, smiling motivationally with clenched fists. Shen Jinghong continued to move and, turning mentally to his comrade, thought that he was reborn only for his sake. His comrade still continued to watch him. Shen Jinghong looked at him kindly and smiled widely. His eyes took on a sparkling hue with joy. The comrade clenched his teeth tightly together, continuing to smile and winked. Shen Jinghong turned around and continued to walk further away from the crowd. He walked with his head down and still kept his hands in the pockets of his black cloak. He thought that he would put all his strength into the era of the mighty numerous races. Shen Jinghong looked slightly to the side. He thought and understood, after which, with his own hands, he would end this era of chaos from the diversity of species. He looked down, pressing his lips together into a thin line. Shen Jinghong firmly decided that there would be no more casualties. He looked at the blue sky, on which snow-white clouds were moving smoothly, and smiled good-naturedly. The crowd of guys behind him continued to watch his actions in shock. The guy in the white t-shirt came forward and exclaimed that he was still that coward and deserter. He angrily put his hands forward, one of which he clenched into a fist, and added that his knot was in cooking porridge and in washing diapers in the rear. The other people behind him stood silently and said nothing. They didn't even express any emotion. The guy in the white t-shirt looked at the military and exclaimed that he was going to answer the call and go against numerous races on the battlefield. He fearlessly added that he was ready to contribute to the great power. The military looked at him warily, not expecting such a moment. One of them carefully examined the guy in the white t-shirt and said that when everyone is just waiting for something, this was a great opportunity for him to prove himself. The guy in the white t-shirt grinned and looked attentively at the military man. Suddenly, the man pointed his index finger at him angrily and shouted that some selfish people who grovel like dogs are not worthy of seeing a bright future. With his other hand, the military man hit the table hard, causing the pen to jump up next to the folder of questionnaires. The sun brightly illuminated the red ribbon hung on the street next to one of the buildings. At this time, Shen Jinghong walked along the traffic road without any emotion, still holding his hands in his pockets. His hair shone brightly in the sun. Shen Jinghong looked up and looked forward with a smile. He mentally commanded the system to start. He added that he was choosing the third direction for the development of events. A notification appeared above him and informed him that the owner had chosen the third direction, which was the divine killing of a hundred. Shen Jinghong lowered his head and looked forward from under his brows. The next alert said that he had increased physical and mental strength which increases the development of skills. The third alert reported that the duration of the degree of improvement increased with increasing skill levels. Shen Jinghong's eyes lit up with white and red light. Strange hieroglyphs appeared around his body, surrounding him in a circle near his face. He raised his head up and felt all the power. He looked forward with bottomless white eyes. After a few moments, Shen Jinghong said that not everyone can wait for the torch. He added that he would therefore become the only light. A circle began to emanate from his hand, which had a bright and blue aura. Lightning emanated from the borders of the circle, moving in brittle lines towards Shen Jinghong's hand. Shen Jinghong carefully looked ahead at the solid ground, 
where the same characters that surrounded his face a few minutes ago were depicted in a circle. Imperial University Sometime later, when the sky turned yellow and pink with the colors of sunset, there was no longer a line of volunteers in the square. Students were engaged in activities based on their interests. Someone was kicking a ball, someone was having a casual conversation and laughing merrily. Above the square, against the backdrop of the sunset sky, hung a red poster with the inscription, Everyone is responsible for protecting their home and country. The man in military uniform looked at the watch he was wearing and told his partner to organize the files and hand over the work to the second group. Their time is up. His partner, dressed in military uniform, held a thick stack of white sheets of paper with lists in his hands. When they looked ahead, they saw a slender, tall, blonde girl with a neat haircut approaching them. She was wearing a short brown top with long white sleeves and dark blue low-rise jeans, cinched at the waist with a belt. The girl approached them with a confident gait, looking sternly ahead. She resolutely clenched her hands, wrapped in white bandages, into fists. The enthusiastic exclamations of students could be heard behind her. One of them said that this is Sister Mentor Ling Kiyu, who killed 50 monsters in just a month during the war. Another guy said that girls who were in the race war are not like others. They are very beautiful and everyone likes them. All the guys standing on the university courtyard looked at her with admiration. She, as if not noticing them and not hearing these words, proudly walked to the recruiting station. Next to her stood a dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit, who looked at her with delight and said that it was all over. She felt herself beginning to worship. She then clasped her hands together in front of her with admiration and, dripping saliva, said that she no longer liked the soft-bodied Shen Jinghong. She now admired Sister Master Ling Qiu. When Ling Qiu approached the military, they saluted her with a gesture, placing their hands on the visors of their caps and unanimously reported to Commander Ling Qiu that they had sorted out the files and now she could take over her shift. She replied dryly that it was wonderful. Ling Qiu took the lists in her hands and began to carefully study the notes. When her eyes fell on the cross on the list, she asked displeasedly, Did anyone refuse the battle of multiple species? Ling Qiu carefully looked at the surname and signature and asked, Is this also a man? She asked Shen Jinghong out loud. The military man looked at her in confusion and confirmed that this young man refused to participate in the war. He added excitedly that they had offered him multiple times, but he remained adamant. The military man admitted that they couldn't believe that there were still people who didn't know the feeling of shame. Angry conversations between two guys were heard in the crowd. One said that according to Shen Jinghong, he would contribute to the war from the rear. They angrily added that he was a coward. Another guy added, it seems that people didn't say that Lai Niu said it. The first guy replied that Shen Jinghong had definitely thought about it. Ling Qiu stood silently, turning her back to them. And listen to this dialogue. The girl with dark hair and teeth like a rabbit contorted her face and said, She never liked this Shen Jinghong. He thinks that he is smarter than everyone else. Then she angrily raised her index finger and added, He also thinks that Sister Ling Qiu, who participated in the race war, is just stupid. Ling Qiu widened her eyes in shock as she heard these words. She angrily ordered the military to notify the district propaganda and agitation department that a deserter who refused to serve would be making the headlines today. The soldiers opened their mouths wide in surprise. Ling Qiu barked angrily, asking a question, did they not hear? This topic will definitely gain popularity. Let Shen Jinghong tell her everything they know about it. A girl with dark hair and teeth like a rabbit gloatingly raised her index finger and said that this is correct. Everyone should know that this man, not lacking in arms and legs, refused to take part in the war. A guy in a white t-shirt and an earring angrily said that this should be on the front pages. The imperial excellent student prefers to cook porridge in the rear as a nanny. Ling Qiu looked sternly at the military, expecting her order to be carried out immediately. They fearfully and unanimously reported, it will be done. After some time, when dim stars appeared in the night sky, The sky was covered with dark clouds, and heavy rain began to fall. There were still people standing in the square. Shen Jinghong walked in the pouring rain and held in his hand a crumpled white piece of paper on which a leave application was written. He walked calmly past people who looked at him in surprise. These people stood hiding from the rain under umbrellas. 
A dark-haired girl with big gray eyes stood under the same umbrella as the guy and told him that they say Shen Jinghong has taken a leave of absence. The guy replied that if he did not leave voluntarily, the university would expel him. He is the only one in the entire academy who refused to participate in the war. A black-haired guy standing nearby under an umbrella said indignantly that the pride of all teachers had become a deserter. Shen Jinghong, with his shoulders down, silently approached the checkpoint. The passage was closed with laser beams, creating a barrier. He stopped in front of it, waiting for an older man in a brown short-sleeved shirt to open the exit for him. The old man looked at him condemningly and said that he was a 70-year-old gray-haired old man, but his whole soul was filled with the desire to serve the motherland. He looked at Shen Jinghong appraisingly and said that he was still so young, but he was already striving for self-preservation and was afraid of death. Shen Jinghong looked down and did not answer. The old man looked at his hand, in which he held the control panel with the antenna. He pressed the button and the beams blocking the path dissipated. When Shen Jinghong passed by, the old man leaned out of the window of the checkpoint and shouted at him not to come again. His university should have gotten rid of such a person. After a while, a black car stopped in front of Shen Jinghong. He walked up to the car door and said that they were going to the rear of the battle of numerous races. The driver sitting in the car pressed something with his finger on the brightly glowing screen. It was written there that passengers were being transported. The driver turned his head towards Shen Jinghong and asked with interest, Are there old people, women and children in that direction? Is the young man going on leave? Shen Jinghong gloomily replied no. The car started moving, its rear lights were glowing red, and the front lights were white, illuminating the wet road. Shen Jinghong sat sadly in the back seat, and the driver, without stopping, asked again. There are also wounded people there. Is he going to see a friend? Shen Jinghong replied dryly that he needed to pass on the information to the rear service. The driver opened his mouth in surprise and looked at him in the rearview mirror. A voice came from the radio in the car and said that the main news of the evening was that there was a student at the Imperial University whose medical conditions were excellent but he refused to participate in the war. They cannot understand the reason for such cowardice and escape from reality. The driver, upon hearing this news, clenched his teeth angrily and thought that he was pathetic. He sharply pressed his foot on the brake pedal, and the car stopped noisily. He angrily ordered Shen Jinghong to get out, so that he gets out of the car. A black car illuminated the rain-wet road with bright blue headlights. The rain continued to pour heavily into the already deep puddles. Someone's voice angrily told him to get out. The driver looked at Shen Jinghong angrily through the windshield of the car. There were deep wrinkles on the bridge of his nose due to the intense anxiety he was currently experiencing. Shen Jinghong looked out the window through which he could see the rain pouring heavily. The driver frowned even more. Deep shadows lay across his forehead next to the wrinkles. He stubbornly continued to look forward without saying another word. Shen Jinghong looked at him carefully without answering. With an emotionless expression on his face, he opened the backpack lying on his lap and began to search for something in it. A moment later, he pulled out a large stack of band notes from his backpack. It was all tightly packed, preventing it from falling apart. Shen Jinghong threw a stack of band notes at the driver with a slight movement of his hand and looked ahead gloomily. The driver grimaced with anger and grabbed the steering wheel of the car tighter. It all immediately landed on him with a dull sound. The driver looked down in surprise, without saying anything. He suddenly picked up a stack of band notes and chuckled thoughtfully, looking at it in shock. The driver pressed the gas and the car began to drive, illuminating the road with bright blue headlights. The rain was still pouring heavily on the asphalt. Raindrops also fell on the roofs of tall buildings. The drops broke on the hard surface and splashed in different directions. Two hours later, the car drove into an archway, above which hung a huge sign. The bright light from the car's headlights continued to illuminate the asphalt. The car stopped in front of a sign that was made of wood. The rain continued to pour heavily. The leaves, unable to withstand the weight of the water, let the rain pass through them. The driver stopped the car continuing to hold the steering wheel tightly with his hands. He did not turn towards Shen Jinghong, but looked ahead emotionlessly. Shen Jinghong opened his mouth in shock and looked to the side. He heard a strange sound and became alert, 
frowning. His mobile phone said through the speaker that their reporter was condemning Shen Jinghong's actions. The phone screen glowed brightly, showing this recording. Shen Jinghong clutched the phone tighter and began to read it in a daze. In this, it was written that students of the Imperial University should absorb knowledge in the stomach of dogs. The article said that they did not know the thinking process, but he expressed his opinion about it in the football system. Since childhood, Captain Lung Kai was ready to give her life for her homeland, and this cowardly Shen Jinghong can only sacrifice honor in order to save his own life. Shen Jinghong ran his finger on the phone while reading the text. He warily looked at every letter of the written article. Suddenly, an unknown force forced Shen Jinghong to jump up. He put his arms out to the sides, trying to maintain his balance. His entire body shook with tension from the unexpected attack. Shen Jinghong dropped the backpack from his hands and opened his mouth in shock, clenching his fist. He frightenedly reached forward with his other hand, without saying anything. He looked forward at the driver's seat and noticed that he was not there. The car's windshield was broken in half and covered with pronounced cracks. Shen Jinghong opened his mouth in shock. He peered through the broken window and noticed a huge gorilla standing next to the car. The rain continued to fall intensely, but this did not frighten the monster at all. The gorilla leaned on his powerful arms. The monster stood in place without any emotion, breathing heavily. In his hands was the driver, whom he held tightly. The gorilla's entire body was illuminated by the bright headlights of the car. The driver helplessly continued to swing his legs to free himself from the monster. The gorilla squeezed the driver harder, completely twisting his body, and threw him up. Blood splashed in different directions, staining everything nearby. The monster towered significantly above the car. Scarlet drops of blood continued to drip onto the windshield. The driver fell on the asphalt in an unnatural position. His upper torso was facing up, and his legs and pelvic area were twisted in the other direction. His arms were broken and bounced off the asphalt several times from the impact. The driver opened his mouth helplessly. The rarity of this beast was fifth. It was a devil monkey. A type of earth monkey modified by the Dalin tribe. The devil monkey had three stars in strength, five stars in intelligence, and four stars in endurance. The devil monkey defiantly raised her clenched fists up and began waving it around. Shen Jinghong mentally wondered why there was such a powerful being in the rear. In a past life, many animals suffered and turned into monsters. However, a monster of this rank would only appear in a few years. With every step of the devil monkey, a rather loud sound was heard. Shen Jinghong frowned with anger and looked ahead carefully. He assumed that because of his rebirth, the world had changed a little. He frowned, looking ahead carefully. A moment later, his eyes lit up with white light, and golden-colored hieroglyphs began to rise up next to his body. Shen Jinghong clenched his fists and continued to diligently control his skills. After a moment, he exclaimed with complete readiness. He's starting, he furrowed his brows from intense tension. His eyes took on a blue hue instead of a white tint and brightly illuminated half of his face. Shen Jinghong grinned maliciously and let out a chuckle. He got close to the broken glass and, still grinning, looked forward with blue eyes that had no pupils. Suddenly, a blue glow came from his hand, with small blue lightning bolts curling around it. It moved forward with rapid movement, having a bright blue tint. The devil monkey froze in place, stunned, and stopped waving his arms. With a threatening cry, Shen Jinghong swung his fist, from which lightning flashed in different directions, and began to move forward. His eyes still continued to glow with a white-blue light. The devil monkey froze in place in shock, not expecting such a quick attack. Shen Jinghong confidently approached the devil monkey and punched him in the stomach with his fist. His energy tore through the back of the devil monkey, which began to fall down at great speed, unable to stay on its feet. Shen Jinghong remained standing in place, holding his fist forward. The devil monkey began to move away from him with great speed. There was a huge hole in her stomach, consisting of solid meat and blood. Shen Jinghong carefully watched the monster fall backwards. The devil monkey fell on the asphalt with his back. Turning her whole body over her head, she fell on her stomach, sliding a few more meters. A moment later, the devil monkey leaned on his hands, trying to stand up. 
Shen Jinghong thought in surprise that the monsters were still resisting. A crazy smile appeared on his face. Suddenly, when the devil monkey stood on the asphalt, a bright blue light appeared in the hole on its stomach, illuminating the entire park next to Shen Jinghong. The devil monkey raised his head up to hide his gaze from the bright glow. Shen Jinghong thought displeasedly, gritting his teeth, that the monster would self-destruct. He looked ahead warily. Bright rays of blue light continued to emanate from the monkey's body in different directions, illuminating Shen Jinghong's body. Shen Jinghong clenched his fists from tension. At the same time, another creature began to approach the devilish monkey, snapping its mouth with long, sharp fangs. Bright light still continued to emanate from the monkey everywhere. Suddenly the mouth with sharp fangs slammed shut. Drops of blood appeared on the teeth and fur around it. Standing in front of Shen Jinghong was a creature that he could not see. The creature had the shape of a wolf with a long mane flowing in the wind. Shen Jinghong froze in place, looked forward carefully and noticed how a cloud of smoke rolled out of the monster's mouth, which immediately began to spread in the humid air from the rain. The monster opened its mouth and bared its sharp fangs. The creature looked like a huge lion with several tails. The monsters moved with careful steps toward Shen Jinghong. Shen Jinghong looked forward confidently, smiling slightly. At this time, the creature clenched its teeth and looked at him with a growl. Shen Jinghong smiled smugly as he continued to stand in place. He watched the monster carefully. Suddenly, the girl standing on the monster's head shouted for him to follow him to the floor. At this time, the monsters opened their mouths as if they were trying to attack Shen Jinghong. Shen Jinghong opened his mouth in shock, not expecting to see something like this. He looked ahead in shock. The girl standing on the monster was holding a red umbrella in her hands, protecting her from the rain. Her hair, which had a purple tint, fluttered slightly in the wind. The lion-like monster pressed its paw to its head and looked down sadly. The purple-haired girl looked closely at his paw. A moment later, she went down on the monster's paw and looked ahead of her with a serious look. With a slight movement, she jumped off the monster's paw, landing on her long white heels. Shen Jinghong froze in surprise, not saying a word. The girl with purple hair looked down guiltily and, apologizing, began to justify that her five-tailed beast had eaten its prey. She once again sincerely apologized and added, suggesting that her beast was too hungry and she had to repay him somehow. Shen Jinghong pursed his lips and looked at her carefully, listening to her excuse. A girl with purple hair held out an umbrella and asked if this would be suitable as payment. A slight blush of embarrassment appeared on her face. Shen Jinghong continued to stand in place, not moving at all. He looked carefully at the red umbrella extended to him and pursed his lips. The girl with purple hair looked down guiltily and admitted that this was the only thing she had. She continued to stretch the umbrella forward with some desperation. The purple-haired girl held out an umbrella and closed her eyes, continuing to lower her head down. Shen Jinghong looked at her carefully and thought that this girl had never raised her eyes. He mentally cursed, wondering why she was even humiliating herself. The girl with purple hair pursed her lips into a thin line and looked ahead with undisguised sadness. Shen Jinghong at this time thought that her low self-esteem did not match her real strength. Shen Jinghong clenched the fabric of his clothes with his hand. He continued to closely follow the girl's gaze and thought that she was skillfully controlling the strange beast that had eaten the devilish monkey. He looked at the girl with purple hair and the monster standing next to her, who showed his sharp fangs and carefully watched them. Shen Jinghong guessed that this was not this girl's only trump card. Shen Jinghong looked at her carefully and said calmly, saying one word, name. The purple-haired girl, still looking down, said her name. Her name was Lai Wanwen. Shen Jinghong frowned and thought that the girl had no bad intentions towards him, so he didn't have to think of anything. He looked ahead through the heavy rain. Shen Jinghong immediately mentally decided that he just needed to leave quickly. He wrapped his wide palm around Lai Wanwen's small hand. He looked at her carefully as she continued to look down. Shen Jinghong continued to tightly grasp Lai Wanwen's palm. He touched the back of her hand with his finger, but meanwhile grabbed the umbrella with his thumb. Lai Wanwen opened her mouth in shock when she felt his touch. She looked ahead in shock. The rain continued to fall on her with all its might, 
dripping from her hair. At this time, Shen Jinghong took away the umbrella and, putting his hand in his pocket, walked past Lai Wanwan. Without turning around, he said, let her think that he accepted. Drops of rain were breaking on the umbrella with quick movements, bouncing to the sides. Shen Jinghong began to move forward, leaving Lai Wanwen in the rain, and said when he has the opportunity, he will return. Lai Wanwen continued to stand in place, holding her hand up as if she was still holding an umbrella. She did not move from her place and continued to look in front of her, stunned. Shen Jinghong was moving forward at this time, holding a red umbrella above him. He began to pass by the monster, which immediately pressed itself to the ground. This caused a loud sound. Shen Jinghong froze in place, looking forward in surprise. He looked questioningly, his lips pressed tightly together. The monster clenched his fanged teeth tightly and looked forward with fear. Drops of rain flowed down his thick fur. Shen Jinghong gritted his teeth and thought that this animal had a very timid look. He looked ahead carefully and mentally suggested, asking the question, Is he afraid of him? Suddenly he guessed, and the man said, No. Shen Jinghong extended the umbrella closer to the monster, who immediately moved away from it. The monster opened his mouth in fear, his eyes widening in fear. Shen Jinghong still continued to put his hand with the umbrella forward, carefully observing the reaction of the creature. He smiled smugly and asked the question, Did it scare him? He chuckled triumphantly, looking pleased. Shen Jinghong began to hold the umbrella above him again and walked forward, avoiding the monster. The monster widened its eyes and retreated from Shen Jinghong with careful movements. Every step he took made a loud sound. Suddenly, Shen Jinghong put his umbrella to the side and, raising his other hand up, screamed heart-rendingly. He looked at it dumbfounded and noticed water flowing abundantly from the horizon. The rain at this time still continued to fall intensely, flooding the entire area around. The monster followed Shen Jinghong with his eyes in surprise, clenching his teeth together in surprise. The rain still continued to fall from the night sky, which was covered with thick gray rain clouds. The trees, slightly noticeable in the wind, swayed a little, and the leaves, unable to withstand the weight of the water, smoothly bent. Lai Wanwen touched the palm that Shen Jinghong had been holding for a while while he tried to take the umbrella from her. She looked down sadly, still not looking up. Rain was dripping heavily next to her. Lai Wanwen stood in the middle of the field. There was a circular aura around her that did not allow water to enter. It kept the rain away. Lai Wanwen still pressed her hand to herself and looked ahead without moving. Next to her, there were deep puddles from heavy rain. Raindrops continued to fall abundantly into the already huge puddles. Suddenly, a voice called Lai Wanwen's name indignantly and very loudly. Lai Wanwen opened her mouth in fear and turned back. Her hair began to develop slightly from the sudden movement. She immediately moved from her place and began to run. Her heels sank slightly into the rain-soaked ground. Lai Wanwen noticed in front of her a man in a black cloak, who had a huge scar from his forehead to his chin cutting through one of his eyes. The man looked down with displeasure. Lai Wanwen thought it was Commander Wu. Commander Wu exclaimed angrily, raising his fist. How could she leave the squad without permission? Behind him stood his two assistants, their faces filled with contempt. Lai Wanwen lowered her hands in fear and stood still. Her hair and clothes fluttered in the wind. In front of her stood Wu King, a three-star fighter who was an important element in the ranks. He opened his mouth angrily, as if he was trying to say another verbal insult. His facial scar extended not only to his eye, but also to the edge of his mouth. Lai Wanwen looked down, feeling empty, without saying anything. Her eyes were full of despair. Suddenly a monster appeared behind her, its mouth with fangs opening threateningly. He leaned on his front paws, giving Wu King a more intimidating appearance. Wu King at this time angrily asked her a question. Does she know how much expenses they incurred in accompanying her? He continued to shout angrily, asking the question if she had her own strategic plan. Is that why she left the Battle of the Species? Wu King commanded her to raise her head and speak. His black cloak fluttered in the wind and continued to be soaked in rain. Lai Wanwen pressed her hand to her chest and still looked down guiltily. One of the assistants opened his mouth in surprise and turned to Commander Wu. He assumed that Lai Wanwen had already realized her mistake. 
Wu King angrily turned towards the assistant and asked him a question. Does he also want to ask for his leniency? He shouted angrily. After completing the escort mission, he would no longer need to return to the squad. He added, let him stay in the rear. The assistant opened his eyes and mouth in shock, not expecting this. Wu King angrily pointed his finger at his chest and shouted. He heard that the kid from the Imperial University was painfully enjoying washing diapers in the rear. He added that he had some information to report tonight, and they should form a squad and mock the great power together. The assistant put his hands out to the sides in fear and opened his mouth wide in shock. With a trembling voice, he began to make excuses and said that he was mistaken. He is loyal to his country and will not hesitate to give his life in the war of many races, fulfilling his duty. The assistant put his two hands forward with reconciliation, as if trying to communicate that he completely obeyed Wu King. Wu King pointed his finger at Lai Wanwen and asked furiously, Most of them are accompanying her to the rear, but does she deserve it? He did not pay attention to the rain, but angrily shouted that she had left the squad without permission, so he would certainly report it. Lai Wanwen obediently stood still and did not move. Wu King moved slightly towards her with his whole body and told her that punishment awaited her. He thinks she is, but he didn't finish his thought. Lai Wanwen opened her mouth and pressed her palm to herself. Wu King began to bring his finger closer to her face, from which various lightning bolts and strange-looking circles emanated on all sides. Lai Wanwen opened her mouth in shock, looking at the finger in front of her. She cowered in fear. The lightning coming from Wu King's hand prevented him from moving closer to Lai Wanwen. Wu King opened his eyes in shock and clenched his teeth. A bead of sweat dripped down his face from excitement. He mentally thought about where the pressure that was holding him back came from. He wondered and continued to mentally reason about how this was possible. He felt as if he had just crawled out from under a pile of corpses. Suddenly, a huge drop of water began to hang from the sky above Wu King, who continued to angrily pull his finger forward. The rain still continued to pour down intensely, drenching everything around. Wu King looked up and noticed a huge drop. He spread his legs to the sides taking a more comfortable position for maintaining balance. A second later, he opened his eyes and mouth in shock. He mentally exclaimed, No. Wu King's tenacious gaze rushed forward. He furrowed his brows and deep wrinkles appeared on his forehead. He carefully began to peer forward and noticed that there was not a single drop of water around Lai Wanwen. Lai Wanwen looked down dejectedly, pressing her hand to her chest. She continued to stand there. Drops of rain ran down Wu King's face. His hair, which was also wet, released huge drops of rain that ran down Wu King's face. Wu King looked up. At the top, there was a creature similar in build to a lion and with long wings. It jumped and rushed straight towards him. Wu King opened his mouth in shock and looked up in fear. Drops from the monster's mouth continued to drip down profusely. The monster roared deafeningly. Wu King fearfully put his arms out to the sides and tried to dodge the drops falling down. He exclaimed in panic that it was Kianki. Sweat ran down his face, mixing with raindrops. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Shen Jinghong walked alone along a deserted road in the pouring rain. He held in his hand a red umbrella with white stripes, which protected him at least a little from the rain. Shen Jinghong looked over his shoulder and saw a monster that looked like a big golden cat flying behind him. They both looked at each other, their eyes meeting. Shen Jinghong thought that the battle of multiple species had just begun. To his surprise, his witchcraft skills had already developed to such an extent. He turned away and calmly walked further along the rain-wet road. After a while, he approached the stop of Route 925. Shen Jinghong stood under the transparent roof, folded his wet umbrella, and thought that because of his rebirth, the course of events seemed to have changed. He said out loud, System Diagnostics. An alert appeared above him. He studied it carefully and thought that Devil Monkey added a lot of experience. Shen Jinghong stood under the roof of the bus stop, holding a folded umbrella in his hand. He looked at a huge puddle on the asphalt, on which the rain drummed, leaving circular stains on the surface of the water. After some time, he saw a red bus approaching him, its headlights burning brightly the light of which was reflected brightly in the puddles on the road. The rain drummed noisily on the roof. The bus stopped, 
The front door opened, and Shen Jinghun confidently stepped onto the step. He entered the salon, stopped in front of the full driver, paid for the fare, and went deeper into the salon. The bus was crowded. People thoughtfully went about their business. Shen Jinghong heard the voice of a news announcer coming from the TV screen behind him on the bus. The dark-haired girl on the screen reported that today one student from the Imperial University, with the best natural abilities, refused an invitation to serve. Shen Jinghong's photo appeared on the entire screen. The announcer continued that their radio station condemns escaping from the battlefield, comparing such an act to that of a dog. Shen Jinghong stood silently, without turning to the screen. The old man looked at his photo, and then turned his head in surprise and looked at Shen Jinghong. The little boy standing opposite Shen Jinghong opened his eyes in surprise and looked at the TV screen. Then he turned towards the elderly woman and asked in surprise why the elder brother refused to serve. Grandmother patted him on the head and gloomily suggested not to study with him, because he was just an unworthy person. She hugged her grandson tightly, closing her eyes in indignation. Shen Jinghong stood silently in the middle of the bus, looking down at the floor. The passengers looked angrily in his direction, not hiding their indignation. The old man sitting opposite Shen Jinghong stood up from his seat. It was an elderly man in a green jacket with a cane for support. He rested his hand on it and, trying not to fall, mockingly invited Shen Jinghong to sit in his place. He said irritably that he was still young and he would be more useful. He must take care of socially disadvantaged sections of the population like him. Shen Jinghong smiled sarcastically and thanked him, his eyes flashing angrily. He pushed the old man aside and quickly approached the seat. The old man widened his eyes in shock clearly not expecting such agility and impudence from him. Shen Jinghong put the hood of his cloak on his head, put his hand in his trouser pocket, and took out his headphones. He put it in his ears, sat down imposingly on the seat, folded his arms on his chest, and began to listen to the music with his eyes closed. The old man in the green jacket looked at him furiously and, standing weakly on his sore legs, yelled furiously about how arrogant the youth had gone. Even his eyes turned white from anger. Shen Jinghong calmly continued to listen to the music, not paying attention to the old man. Suddenly, there was a cry for the driver to stop the bus. He wants to get off. The bus braked sharply. The driver looked fearfully into the cabin through the distant mirror. One of the passengers angrily reported that he refused to travel in the same transport with this idiot. The old people riding on the bus angrily said that they could still be useful and were not going to sit next to such an insolent person. The driver exhaled desperately. The bus stopped in the middle of a street flooded with rainwater. Many men got off the bus into the street and began to open their umbrellas. One of the passengers said that a harmonious world would help this scoundrel. Another said that the old man was furious when he saw this weakling. Someone said that he couldn't wait to go to the front, tear the monster apart, and give it to this non-entity. Another old man mockingly objected that he should not dare to do this. If a guy is afraid to go to war, then something like this will definitely wet his pants. Kianki circled in the sky above them, leaving a glowing white trail behind him. The old people, noticing a luminous whirlwind in the sky, widened their eyes in fear. The whirlwind intensified, tearing the umbrellas from their hands, which rose high into the dark sky. The old people looked up in fear, not understanding what was happening. One of them, the old man from the bus, realized in horror that his body was not moving. His pants became wet, and a puddle formed on the asphalt underneath him. He looked in despair at the monster Kianki, who softly landed on his paws in front of the old man, his eyes flashing angrily. A white bird followed Kianki in the air. He created a white ball of energy around himself, into which the bird crashed. His body, losing its white feathers, quickly fell into a puddle on the asphalt. The old men, seeing this, cowardly fell to their knees, bowing their heads respectfully before Kianki. The old man in the green jacket, drenched in sweat and raindrops, thought with relief that he could do it. He jumped to his feet, stretching his arm forward, and rushed to catch up with the departing bus. The old man desperately shouted for them not to leave. He wants to sit down. Other old men ran after him, trying to catch up with the bus. They fell to their knees from fatigue continuing to wave and shout for the people from the bus to help. They needed to sit down as quickly as possible. 
Shen Jinghong leaned his head against the glass of the bus window and silently looked forward. Suddenly, in the glass of the window next to his reflection, he saw the reflection of a little boy who was looking at him questioningly. The boy asked if he had protected them. Shen Jinghong looked at him, and the boy, smiling happily, said that his elder brother was very strong. He excitedly spread his arms and said that he needed to tell them about it. Shen Jinghong did not answer, silently continuing to look ahead. The grandmother walked up to the boy, grabbed him tightly with both hands around the waist, and tried to pull him away from Shen Jinghong. She demanded that he not pay attention to such people. The elderly woman walked away, dragging her grandson in front of her. She looked back and angrily added that it was a waste of time. The boy waved his arms and legs in despair and shouted that his brother was much cooler than Ultraman. He capriciously added that he didn't believe it. He doesn't believe it. He added that he had changed and would protect them. The old people watching this scene laughed mockingly. And Jing Hong again leaned his head against the glass of the window and quietly said that he could do it. He looked out the window, where he could see multi-story buildings with bright lights burning in the windows. Shen Jing Hong took his umbrella in his hand, pressed the button, and hit the floor of the bus with its sharp end. From the sharp tip of the umbrella, yellow rays of magical light sparkled brightly in different directions. A yellow energy ball glowed around the bus. This glow was seen by a monster with a red mane. He looked like a powerful wolf with large wings and a red mane. The monster stopped in the air, turned around and headed away from the bus, which continued to drive calmly in the pouring rain. The rain drummed on the roof with all its might. After some time, a convoy of cars was driving along a zigzag road, illuminating the road ahead with headlights. These were green minibuses, in which people in military uniform were traveling. Wu King held a pencil in his hand and wrote something on a piece of paper with a shaking hand. In front of him was a resume from Lai Wanwen's Martial Forces Archive, which stated that she was 17 years old, and her ability was the Shan Hai Jing scripture. The driver, a dark-haired guy driving a minibus, noticed that Commander Wu was shaking violently. He asked the question, Is the commander okay? Wu King assured that everything was fine. You need to report to your superiors as soon as possible. He exhaled excitedly and said that Lai Wanwen had opened a new level of beasts, which could affect the situation in the battle. Beads of sweat ran down his face. Shaking violently, he continued to write something on a piece of paper and added, in addition, so that nothing would hinder his promotion, he should ask his superiors to strictly punish Lai Wanwen. The green minibus continued to drive in the pouring rain. The driver, looking ahead, said in surprise that Kianki must have flown away. Wu King angrily slammed his fist, which was holding a pencil, onto a piece of paper. He exhaled angrily and shouted that he did not want to see this animal anymore. The look of this race is more fearsome compared to others on the battlefield. Once Lai Wanwen ordered this beast to come out, they would instantly win. The driver squinted his eyes at him and said, once they got there, he would have to try to convince Lai Wanwen. Wu King angrily looked at her photo from under his brows and said that persuasion was nonsense. All the monsters that came out were once summoned, just like the numerous races on the battlefield. They are just animals. Out of anger, he pressed the handle hard with his thumb, and it shattered into several pieces. He said that if you didn't improve your abilities enough, monsters might come out, so you shouldn't take it on. The driver glanced sideways at him and tried to argue that Lai Wanwen's skills were the highest among the younger generation. Their war ministry is unable to grant her even more resources. Commander Wu angrily threw a broken pen out the open window, crumpled up a piece of paper, then tore it to shreds. Wu King barked that she should use her abilities in the right direction, since she has such a gift. If it weren't for her dedication, she wouldn't dare to bear all the consequences. Wu King looked in front of him where the pieces of white sheet lay. Wu King picked up the screen that had a photo of Shen Jinghong on it. He gloatingly held the photo to the side and showed it to the driver. Then with a smile he said that he would go to the rear and look at the coward who had wasted his talent. It will make him regret his decision. Wu King added with an angry smile that sometimes life is much more painful than death. Then Commander Wu fell silent and stared out the windshield at the wet road along which the pouring rain drummed. The green minibus, illuminating the road with its headlights, continued on its way. After a while, 
A huge monster with Lai Wanwen sitting on it landed between two green minibuses. She stroked the monster's long red fur and said, A Zhang should be more obedient in the future, because he almost died just now. Lai Wanwen remembered how Shen Jinghong struck a huge monster, a gorilla with enormous power, completely striking it with his energy. She anxiously pressed her palm to her chest and said that she had never seen such a powerful person on the front line. Ah Zhang looked ahead in surprise. Lai Wanwen said hopefully that A Zhang would not be so disobedient in the future. The most important thing for him on the front line is to survive. After some time, the red bus with passengers continued to drive along the wet asphalt, illuminating the road with its headlights. Shen Jinghong heard the driver say that they had arrived. He resolutely removed the hood from his head. People calmly got off the bus, carrying large suitcases in their hands. Several such buses arrived here. Many people were moving towards the aisles where they were greeted by employees. A man in a red uniform with a black cap on his head checked the documents of a bald old man with a backpack on his back and sternly said, Next. The old man calmly walked forward. On another aisle, an elderly woman holding her grandson's hand approached a dark-haired girl in a red uniform with a black cap on her head. The employee told them to go to the fifth aisle. The elderly woman thanked her. Behind them stood Shen Jinghong, waiting for his turn. When he approached the girl in red uniform, she politely asked a question. Did he come to the rear to visit relatives or on business? Shen Jinghong did not answer, silently reached into the secret pocket of his jacket and took out his ID. The serving girl widened her eyes in surprise and thought that she had been ignored. Shen Jinghong put his ID on the green scanner and headed forward. Laser beams blocked his path. The employee fearfully extended her hand to him and said that she had to show him how to use the spatial passage so that he could get to the rear. Shen Jinghong, without turning to her, said irritably that he had been here before. A spatial passage lit up in front of him with blue light. He took this a step further and thought that ten years ago they had to go through a lot. The disappearance of the Bermuda ship and Malaysia Airlines plane. It turned out that in many places in the world, there are passages connecting other worlds. They explored the world beyond the dimensional passage and witnessed many civilizations lurking in the darkness. The home front service of the numerous species they go to is the remnants of one of these civilizations. They may feel discomfort here. This is absolutely normal, so there is no need to panic. He walked calmly down the aisle, and a bright white light appeared in front of him. Shen Jinghong covered his eyes with his palm protecting himself from this light. After some time, he found himself in a crowded city. Multi-story high-rise buildings appeared before his eyes, with bright lights burning in the windows. Shen Jinghong looked at all this and thought that he had really returned. This is the first time he has stood here healthy from head to toe. He remembered how in a past life they attached a prosthesis to his severed arm, they also performed surgery on his chest, and inserted a microcircuit inside his body. Now Shen Jinghong stood alive and well in the middle of the city, illuminated by bright spotlights. The dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit told Ling Qiu to look. This weakling had actually come here to report something. She disgustedly said that she despises this Shen Jinghong. Hearing these words, he clenched his fists angrily and thought that after returning today, this woman did not stop being rude. Ling Qiu, smiling maliciously, asked a question. Does he understand the word anger? She stood opposite him, arms crossed over her chest, and a dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit was hiding behind her. She pointed a finger at Shen Jinghong mockingly and laughed cheerfully. He squinted his eyes to the side and said that this was idiocy. Ling Qiu looked angrily in front of her, and behind her, the dark-haired girl ran away with her teeth like a rabbit's, shouting encouragingly to show this impudent person. Ling Qiu activated her spiritual power, and an energy vortex began to glow under her feet. Shen Jinghong stood in front of her and watched this calmly. She said that she had heard that he had ideas regarding moving to the front. Ling Qiu angrily asked him if he had the courage to talk about this. Shen Jinghong looked at her in shock, then exhaled condescendingly and unclenched his fists. Ling Qiu, seeing that he was about to pass by, asked mockingly, faced with the woman, did he decide to back down? Shen Jinghong silently passed by without answering her. She angrily looked after him and barked. How dare he ignore her? 
Ling Qiu extended her hand to the side, from which a magical glow appeared. She proudly announced that she was Ling Qiu, the commander of the second group of the armed forces, in charge of intelligence work. From the bright light, a sharp sword appeared in her hand. She raised it in front of her and pointed the tip toward Shen Jinghong. Ling Qiu asked a question, where is he going? He must report this to his superiors. After these words, Shen Jinghong stopped, looked back at her over his shoulder, and remained silent meaningfully. Ling Qiu, holding a sword in her hand, mockingly asked, Is he not running away? She ordered him to report. Shen Jinghong held his gray ID in his hand and tossed it in his hand. The ID glowed purple. Shen Jinghong angrily said that he was Shen Jinghong's logistics serviceman. He threw the IDs forcefully in her direction and angrily added that he had arrived to report information. Ling Qiu looked dumbfounded as it flew towards her. She mockingly said that this was nothing. She added that she accepts. A moment later, she felt a powerful flow of energy from the ID and was shocked to think that the energy was too powerful. She widened her eyes in fear and put her sword in front of her, trying to defend herself. The ID slammed into the sword with force splitting it into many metal fragments. Ling Qiu thought in shock, how is this possible? The ID card was able to shatter her black metal scimitar into small pieces. Ling Qiu froze in surprise and mentally asked the question, how can this be? She slightly put her hands forward and thought that this weapon was made of metal captured on the battlefield of numerous races. She didn't understand how this was possible. There were many fragments under her feet. Ling Qiu began to think and realized that this was the work of that cowardly man. She clenched her teeth angrily and thought about how he was able to break her black golden scimitar. She narrowed her eyes angrily, looking ahead. Ling Qiu pursed her lips and shook all over from the rage approaching her. Desperate tears flowed down her cheeks. She said with a trembling voice that Shen Jinghong is a coward. She called him an idiot who ran away from the front. Shen Jinghong silently listened to every insult from Ling Qiu. He began to approach her with confident steps. Ling Qiu opened her mouth in shock, slightly leaning her body back. Shen Jinghong frowned and pressed his lips together. He directed a serious and slightly threatening gaze forward. From behind him, Qianqi appeared from the blue glow, clenching his sharpened fangs menacingly. Shen Jinghong held a folded red umbrella in his hands. A blue glow was still rising from his feet, as if he was standing in blue flames. Ling Qiu raised her arms to the sides in surprise. She froze in fear and thought that this look. A slight redness appeared on her face from fear, and a drop of sweat began to flow down her face. At this time, Shen Jinghong walked past her without any emotion, without doing anything. Ling Qiu froze in place, raising her palm to her face. She opened her mouth in surprise not expecting such an outcome of events. Shen Jinghong turned to her and said that he had reported. Ling Qiu continued to stand in place, not moving at all. She clenched her teeth and looked ahead with a feeling of shame. She clenched her fists and began to wave them in different directions, as if she was trying to drown out her feelings. She had the feeling that his words had undoubtedly defeated her. Shen Jinghong continued to walk forward and, waving his hand in farewell, said that let her deal with the formalities as quickly as possible. He thanked her. Ling Qiu froze in place, lowering her hands to the floor. She looked ahead discouraged, in a dazed state. Other people continued to pass next to her, hurrying about their business. Ling Qiu began jumping indignantly on the spot. She shook her whole body with indignation, and many thoughts appeared in her head, which were confused with each other. Shen Jinghong walked along the city street and mentally kept the count, 483. He held the umbrella tightly in his hands and began to lecture further, 497. He looked ahead carefully, still pursing his lips. His count reached 508. Shen Jinghong stopped walking and stopped. His white boots made a slightly noticeable creaking sound as the soles rubbed against the floor. Shen Jinghong stopped next to the wall, on which there was a strange dark deep lighting, in which strange white energy curled in thin stripes. Next to this were two sculptures of strange physique. An inscription appeared above the sculptures, informing them that this was a rear service for numerous races. In the eyes of the sculpture, there were red stones that immediately lit up with a bright light. 
a white aura flowed from their stone bodies in all directions, curling into strange patterns. Shen Jinghong thought that from the breach of the passage of numerous species to the guarding lions, there were 509 steps. He began to reason mentally, this shows that the length of the passage has not changed, and the world also remains the same. He looked forward carefully, his gaze catching on everything. A moment later, he walked up to one of the sculptures, putting his hand on his head, and thought that nothing had changed. He made an exception, except for the food system and the speed of development. Suddenly, a strange diagram appeared above Shen Jinghong's hand, showing his fingerprints. He continued to keep his hand on the sculpture's head. A moment later, a blue sign appeared above his head, indicating that the inspection was complete. This said that he was an earthling. The sculpture's eyes continued to glow red. Under the sculpture's paw was a bag containing a gray stone. And on the neck of the sculpture, where long locks of stone hair hung, there was a necklace on which hung three stones of the same gray color as those in the bag. The stone in the sculpture's mouth stopped glowing red. The eyes of this one began to slowly fade, sparkling brightly for the last time. Another inscription appeared in the blue sign, which said, Welcome to the home front service, diversity of species. The sign asked a question, Do you have any advice for him? At this time, the sculpture completely stopped glowing, acquiring its gray stone hue. Shen Jinghong said in a confident voice that he needed to go to the battle simulation room. The stone on the sculpture that was used to decorate it began to acquire a noticeable red tint. It glowed bright blue. A moment later, a beam spread from the stone of the sculpture into the wall, which was reflected from the black surface in which white threads branched. Shen Jinghong continued to stand motionless, watching the red laser reflecting off all the walls. This connected into a circle that led to a room made of glass and iron. Ahead of the long corridor was a door. In the middle of this was a wide cut of interactive decor. From this one could see the black space, in which there were strange outlines of some auras or mountains. The light from there smoothly penetrated into the long corridor. An alert appeared above Shen Jinghong. It said that the route planning was completed. He was asked not to look around in order to get there safely. There was no longer any glow emanating from the sculpture. A stone statue still stood in front of Shen Jinghong. He suddenly became thoughtful, making a strange sound. He carefully looked forward as the space next to him began to change and turn into the one that was through the door. He walked with confident steps towards the dark surface on his back, in which there were white branched threads. An alert appeared above him, asking him not to look around. Shen Jinghong continued his movement. It was as if he was walking along one road, which consisted of small iron belts with ribbed folds. The notification appeared above him again and asked him not to look around. Shen Jinghong clenched his knees and moved forward with confident steps. He again received a notification telling him not to look around. He clenched his teeth angrily and noticed that it was all noisy. He looked to the side, noticing something strange. Off to the side, the northern lights shone in the starry, endless sky. It had different colors going from purple to green to light blue. Shen Jinghong looked carefully to the side. Suddenly a black hand began to approach him, next to which many white threads branched out. Shen Jinghong looked at it carefully. He mentally thought that the attraction was too strong. He looked up, clenching his teeth in tension. A slight hint of panic flashed across his face. A sign appeared above him congratulating him. He increased the divine kill of hundreds and reached the second level. His progress was 60%. Shen Jinghong opened his mouth in shock, looking forward. He thought excitedly that this abyss could really enhance his skills. He clenched his fists victoriously and exclaimed that this is the best room for stimulating fights. He looked ahead with anticipation, gritting his teeth from the strong confidence overwhelming him. He pulled his finger towards the hologram that appeared in front of him, and, smiling, said that killing this strange monkey also increased his level. The divine kill of a hundred slightly exceeded half of the second level. Shen Jinghong pressed his finger on the hologram, causing small waves to spread in all directions. An alert appeared next to him, asking him not to look around. The notification was repeated and asked him the same thing so that he would not look around. Shen Jinghong angrily shouted to stop it. He lightly stamped his foot and put his arms out threateningly. After a moment he sat down, 
leaning one hand on his knee. He said that only a complete idiot would refuse such a great opportunity. Shen Jinghong leaned his other hand on the umbrella on the floor. He decided he would see what else good would happen. A moment later, a monster similar to a green worm appeared to the side. The worm opened its mouth, whose teeth were very pointed. The monster's eyes glowed brightly red. The creature was heading straight towards Shen Jinghong with the intent to kill. A strange glow appeared in the worm's throat. A moment later, all the energy there began to swirl into a strange vortex. This began to form a huge circle inside the worm's throat. Shen Jinghong raised his hand to his chin and mentally began to reason that the power of attraction had increased even more. He looked ahead carefully. At this time, the worm flashed its red eyes, making an angry sound. Another sign appeared above Shen Jinghong, informing him that he had upgraded to level 3. His current progress was 30%. Shen Jinghong clenched his fists in delight, starting to shout joyfully. Yes, he was beaming with joy. After a few moments, he rose to his feet and thought, looking ahead in shock. It would be great for him if the effect were stronger. He put his hands forward as if trying to protect himself from a worm that was approaching him. The monster swung its long tail in different directions, thereby accelerating its movement. Shen Jinghong opened his mouth in shock and thought with incomprehension. He has already run away. After some time, he again received a notification that his level had increased to fourth. This stated that his current progress was 10%. Shen Jinghong looked at it carefully. The light emanated brightly from this notification, slightly illuminating one side of his face. Shen Jinghong smiled enthusiastically and thought this was great. He looked ahead with anticipation and thought that as his skill level increased, his physical strength and power increased at an exponential rate. He clenched his fist and began to reflect further that this speed exceeded all his expectations. Shen Jinghong exclaimed with a crazy smile, looking down carefully, that he had better go out, otherwise he would not be able to take a good look. He stood in place with a confident gait, his arms slightly out to the sides. He received a notification not to look around again. After some time, the same notification was repeated, and it was written that he should not look around. Meanwhile, elsewhere, an armored police car was approaching a brick building with a bright crescent moon above it. The headlights of this one shone brightly ahead, illuminating the road. At the same time, Ah Zhang was chasing the car. The cars followed each other at high speed, trying to get away from him as quickly as possible. Wu King clenched his fists with a dissatisfied face, looking forward. Lai Wanwen sat on a Zhang. Her feet lightly rested on the fur of this beast. Lai Wanwen put her hand to her chest. She looked ahead with full eyes of hope, touching her leg with her hand. She saw that in front of her stood a huge line of soldiers in black cloaks, stretching to the side. They all looked the same except for their different colors and hair lengths. The girl in the long black hat opened her mouth in shock. Her black hair hung over her red sweater. Wu King stood still. His crying was still developing. A girl in a long black hat approached him with careful steps. She crossed her arms with a friendly smile and said that the multi-species home front service welcomes all returning soldiers. Wu King stood still, not answering. The girl in the black hat said that the Empire is grateful to him, and they thank him too. She bowed before him, leaning on her knees. She added that the passage in the dimension was open and let him return home. The girl in the black hat stood up and, tucking her hair behind her ear, winked and said that she had made a request to her superiors, so the most durable and comfortable covered bridge was already waiting for him. She added, with a slight blush on her cheeks, she hoped the soldiers were homesick. Wu King smugly put his hands forward and said with a smile, as long as they are on the front line, they cannot do without her support. He shook the hand of the girl in the black hat and sincerely thanked her. The girl's cheeks turned even redder from embarrassment. Wu King lightly rested his hand on hers. After some time, he released her. The girl in the black hat put her hand to her mouth and looked forward with a loving gaze. The blush of embarrassment and awkwardness appeared even brighter on her face. Wu King put his hand to his forehead, winked, and said that it was time for them to rest. He had been here many times and carried recruits across the bridge just as many times. He turned to face the soldiers and, using his commanding skills, exclaimed, That's it! 
The soldiers behind him tensed up when they heard the command. With a sharp movement, they lined up, hands tightly pressed to their hips. The girl in the black hat clenched her fists in delight and said that the recruits of their empire were so brave. She added, compared to them, Shen Jinghong, who refused to participate in the war, is like a sewer rat. Wu King grinned, showing his snow-white teeth, and said that the youths of their empire had proven themselves to be very worthy. He added smugly, if he ever got a chance to meet Shen Jinghong, he would make him regret his decision. The girl in the black hat began to nod diligently, continuing to clench her fist with pride. After a moment, she pointed her hand to the side and with a benevolent smile told Wu King to pass. He began to walk with slow steps towards where she indicated. Behind him, Lai Wanlin walked towards a Zhang with confident steps. Wu King continued to move forward fearlessly. The girl in the black hat and top hat continued to watch this enthusiastically. There was still a noticeable blush on her cheeks, which had not completely faded. Lai Wanwen looked ahead, experiencing emotions. The girl in the black hat opened her mouth in surprise and mentally exclaimed that this is that smart girl. She couldn't even imagine what kind of valiant warrior could be worthy of her. She carefully looked up, trying to fully see Lai Wanwen sitting on a zheng, who buried her feet in the red mane. At this time, the beast looked forward warily. The soldiers, having formed a line, moved forward to their march, which they had long ago memorized. The girl in the top hat smiled sweetly. All the soldiers looked at her with a grin, experiencing mixed feelings. The one walking in front turned around and thought that this girl was acting so politely in front of Commander Wu King. The second one, who walked in line, wanted her to behave just as respectfully towards him one day. The third thought dreamily as he returned this time, they should be honored for fighting in the battle of numerous races. The last one in line still continued to look askance to the side and say nothing. After some time, the soldiers moved away from the girl in a black hat and top hat, who was carefully watching them. A bright crescent moon illuminated the forest. Meanwhile, Wu King stood in front of the information door, which glowed with bright dots and stripes on it. Wu King looked to the side demandingly and told them to follow him. He added that they should not dare to lag behind, because passing through a spatial rift is a test for the brain. He explained that if the mental abilities are weak, then many similar effects will be expected, and this is normal. Wu King looked at everyone with a serious look and, frowning, said that he would enter first. He advised that they take 30 deep breaths and then prepare themselves mentally before entering. Wu King confidently approached the spatial rift. From his contact with this, a bright light followed in all directions, illuminating the space of the room very brightly. After a moment, he completely disappeared into it. And Zhang sat opposite the spatial rift. The soldiers stood next to him, not moving anywhere. One of them raised his fist up in contentment and victory, exclaiming that in the future he, too, would become a brave warrior of the Empire, just like the commander. It was a soldier with blonde hair. He added that the commander sets a good example for them. He guessed that the commander had been treated here countless times. Another soldier with dark hair said that he would not come again. He exclaimed, either he would die on the battlefield or not be wounded at all. The third soldier simply clenched his fist next to his chest contentedly, not saying anything. The blonde-haired soldier angrily shouted that some people only take one deep breath and then walk through the portal. He heard that the more times you inhale, the fewer side effects there will be. The soldier with darker hair exclaimed that they were valiant warriors of the Empire. How could they be afraid of a spatial rift? Another guy with dark and short hair put his index finger forward and told him to go then. Lai Wanwen looked up worriedly at this time, still confidently sitting astride a Zheng. She ran her hand through the red mane of her beast and said with encouragement that they were coming. Ah Zheng's eyes lit up with a snow-white color that had no pupils or irises. He growled deafeningly slightly baring his pointed teeth. Meanwhile, in a spatial rift, Wu King moved along a long golden corridor that had neither ceiling nor walls. He mentally thought about going back. He looked forward carefully, his mouth parted in surprise. He realized that he had a familiar feeling. After a moment, he leaned down with his whole body. Wu King vomited directly on the golden floor. White liquid came out of it and spread abundantly across the floor. 
Wu King thought dumbfounded. Every time he passed through the spatial rift, he had the feeling that his internal organs were shifting. He continued to open his mouth, from which the contents of what he had recently vomited flowed abundantly. He thought that he still felt bad. Wu King continued to stand on his knees and hands without moving. He thought that it would be better for him to go to the battlefield and finish off a cluster of octopuses than to return. He wiped away the drool flowing from his mouth with a white glove. He closed his eyes in disgust and took one step closer to what he was throwing up. Wu King exhaled exhaustedly. A puff of smoke disappeared from his mouth into the air. Suddenly, he opened his eyes wide and noticed in front of him a castle with several towers. The castle consisted of many different colors. What it was made of shone brightly. Wu King thought at this time, they are taking thirty breaths, so the recruits must not have seen him. He looked sideways, gritting his teeth. Sweat was running down his face from excitement. He decided he would clean up. A moment later, he swung his hand, brushing away the liquid that was on the floor. After some time, there was nothing left on the floor that indicated his recent poor health. Wu King snapped his fingers contentedly and praised himself, exclaiming, Perfect. Suddenly he heard a voice calling out to him, asking if he was okay. Wu King opened his mouth in shock and screamed in fear. Behind Wu King stood a Zhang with a mocking grin and a cheerful fire in his eyes, with Lai Wanwen sitting on his head. She pressed her hand to her chest in concern and looked at Commander Wu. He curled his mouth in disappointment when he heard her voice. Wu King thought that he shouldn't treat this girl like a normal person. This is a monster. He turned around and saw a huge monster in front of him. Wu King looked up at Lai Wanwen. Her facial expression betrayed no emotion. He worriedly asked the question, Did she see everything? Lai Wanwen stood on her feet on the monster's head and said nothing. Wu King looked at her and, in his defense, said that this is a natural reaction to the rupture of the dimension. If you feel discomfort, you may vomit. There is no need to endure it. It is harmful to the body. Lai Wanwen reproachfully retorted that she was fine. Wu King looked at her angrily. He extended his hand forward and, pointing his finger at her, shouted demandingly that in this case, she should come down and pay tribute to the temple. This covered bridge was destroyed three years ago by three hundred warriors in three days and three nights of fierce battle. This road was paved from the hot blood of their predecessors. Since she is walking along it, let her be calm. Lai Wanwen looked down at him in surprise. She then said the monster's name, Ah Zheng, and pressed her palm on his head so that he would pull her down. Ah Zheng growled intimidatingly at Commander Wu. He turned away in disappointment and headed forward. Wu King turned his head to Lai Wanwen and said irritably that she should be ashamed, because he knelt on the gold bars of the covered bridge, apologizing to the ancestors. They are not monsters, unlike her, after all, they were born to lead them forward. They all looked ahead together. There was a magnificent green temple, trimmed with gold, which sparkled brightly, reflecting the rays of light. After some time, five soldiers fell from above. They all vomited violently. One of them, through tears and vomiting, said that on the internet they say that crossing the bridge is like landing an airplane. This is a lie. Another, suffering from a bout of nausea, said that you should not listen to people on the internet. The third soldier said through vomiting that he felt as if he had been run over by a herd of elephants. They all groaned and sighed painfully from feeling unwell. Hearing their painful groans, the commander angrily turned his head to the side. He, his eyes flashing furiously, barked at them to get up. Wu King furiously clenched his fist, from which rays of yellow light began to shoot out in all directions. He delivered an energy blast that sent five soldiers flying to the sides and falling. Wu King stood majestically above the fallen soldiers who were kneeling before him. He winced contemptuously and told them to look at themselves, a disgrace to the Empire. They reacted too strongly to the dimensional rift. If they were on the battlefield and had to travel through planes and space to fight, how could they complete the mission? The soldiers rose to their feet, dropped their shoulders dejectedly, and looked down at the floor. Wu King raised his clenched fist and angrily shouted that they were a total disappointment. He directed the energy of his fist towards them and once again shouted that they were a disappointment. The soldiers took a cautious step back. Wu King yelled angrily that he was very disappointed. The soldiers lowered their heads in shame. 
one of them, without looking up at Commander Yu, said in fear that they had never been on the battlefield. They cannot grasp all situations that quickly. They didn't even have time to finish the report when he forcibly enrolled them in the detachment right on the side of the road. The soldier, sweating profusely, desperately said that he did not want to go to the front now. He wants to continue his studies. Wu King barked furiously, asking what did he say. He walked forward decisively, with an angry expression on his face. His eyes glowed red with rage. Wu King extended his hand towards him, which glowed with a magical glow. He spread his arms to the sides and a huge monster with horns on his head appeared behind him, his eyes flashing angrily and looking at the soldier. The commander, towering over the frightened soldier, angrily asked the question, would he dare to repeat it? Tears appeared in his eyes out of despair and his whole body began to shake with fear. A huge shadow of a horned monster appeared above the soldier, who hung his head down in doom. Through tears, the soldier desperately said that he was asking for forgiveness. He realized that he was just a coward. But he can't stand it anymore. He can't be of any use in the race war and will simply die. The soldier desperately asked Commander Wu to let him go. He had not filled out anything yet, so he could go to serve in the rear, just like Shen Jinghong. Then he looked up at Commander Yu with a pained look, tears flowing down his cheeks. The soldier admitted through sobs that he was a scoundrel who refused to serve. He is ready to cook meals, wash dishes and wash diapers. He will raise pigs and cows. He will be fine with dogs and pigs. His body says it doesn't want to die. Wu King, his eyes furiously flashing at him, struck him in the chest with a strong blow, from which magical energy rays shot out in all directions. The soldier looked at him in fear and, a moment later, his body exploded, scattering into numerous pieces. Commander Wu looked at this indifferently. The soldiers opened their mouths in shock and said in fear that he really died. Wu King angrily looked at the four remaining soldiers and said sternly, No matter who exactly escapes conscription, the result will be the same. This is also what Shen Jinghong expects. Wu King barked fearfully that he would grant him death. Shen Jinghong stood in front of the portal, from which an aura emanated in all directions in zigzagging threads. It was in a room made of iron and slabs that glowed. Meanwhile, the stone on the sculpture glowed red again. The red lighting began to spread forward in a straight line. The other two stones on the necklace glowed bright blue. There was a noticeable sound coming from all of this. Shen Jinghong stood quietly, carefully waiting for the moment. He looked forward warily, his lips pursing slightly. He still held the red umbrella in one of his hands. A moment later, he entered a room in which lamps were located in huge strips at the top illuminating a space consisting of technological sensors. Shen Jinghong took slow steps that echoed loudly throughout the room. He moved a little away from the door and noticed a robot in front of him, benevolently spreading his iron-gloved hands to the sides. The robot welcomed him into the combat stimulation room, where he could take a break for rehabilitation. The robot smiled in greeting. There was a hologram next to one of his eyes, identifying what was ahead. The robot immediately added with a smile that he should select the intensity. Shen Jinghong thought and looked up. After a while, he looked down uncertainly and told them to turn off the light. His hair fluttered slightly from the smooth movement. The robot froze in place, dumbfounded, its mouth rounded. He looked at him in shock, and his hologram next to his eyes suddenly began to acquire different shades. After a moment, he amiably understood his hands up and said that the rehabilitation exercises should be done with caution, and he was advised to keep the lights on. Shen Jinghong continued to stand silently in place, not protesting in any way. He looked at the floor with displeasure, pressing his lips tightly together. After a moment, he reached out with his hand towards the red umbrella. It lay on the floor, from which came a mirror reflection of the light installed on the ceiling. Shen Jinghong suddenly lay down on the floor with his hand under his head. He lay next to the umbrella, his legs slightly together, and said, closing his eyes, that he would sleep. The robot said with a smile that the battlefield of numerous races was burning, and the country's soldiers were eager to return to the battlefield. His entire iron body glowed with blue threads in which programmatic work was going on. Shen Jinghong asked a question dissatisfied, still continuing to close his eyes. Did he not hear him? 
He immediately opened his eyes angrily and exclaimed that he was going to sleep. Noticeable wrinkles appeared on his forehead from the anger overwhelming him. The robot opened its mouth in surprise, lowered its hands, and went upstairs. He noticed how white strange threads spread upward from Shen Jinghong, which quite brightly illuminated the space around. A moment later, the entire room turned a solid shade of blue. Everything nearby was covered with ice and snow. The robot clasped its iron hands together and looked at it with incomprehension. The hologram above his eye began to spin intensely. Shen Jinghong, still lying on the floor and closing his eyes, said why this is the only way to silence someone. The robot looked at him carefully and warily, analyzing him. He again put his hands out to the sides and said, because humanity obeys only the voice of the strongest. Shen Jinghong continued to lie on the floor with his eyes closed. Meanwhile, elsewhere, the castle, consisting of different elements of different colors, sparkled very brightly. Above the gate of this, there was a huge ball, from which a bright light emanated, blinding everything around. In the middle of the gate, there was the same ball, which also continued to illuminate everything that was nearby. Wu King approached the shining castle, surrounded by his soldiers who were still climbing the stairs. A Zheng watched them from above. His red mane fluttered slightly noticeably in the breeze present in this space. Lai Wanwen sat on his head, carefully looking forward. And Zheng opened his mouth, from which fangs hung. He looked at Lai Wanwen sitting on him. Wu King stopped, and behind him the soldiers stood in a straight line, with their hands submissively folded at their sides. They didn't express any emotion. Wu King turned sharply in their direction and looked at everyone with a tenacious gaze. He asked them angrily whether they knew how this space, the space of the rear of numerous races, appeared. The soldiers opened their mouths in shock, not expecting such a question. They did not know how to respond to this and submissively lowered their heads down. Their faces expressed deep regret. Wu King angrily shouted for them to raise their heads. He said, the squad number they inherited is a sharp battle dagger of numerous races. His gaze was filled with undisguised anger, and he continued to shout, adding that they may not speak, but they should always hold their heads high. Even though they died, their will has not gone away. The soldiers raised their heads up in surprise and opened their mouths. A moment later, they shouted motivationally, Yes! Confidence and determination appeared in their faces. One of the soldiers admitted that they studied this at the university and the service was an accidental discovery of countless predecessors. Another soldier standing in the middle of the line exclaimed that the neon plane in which the service was located was a gift from the ages. He added that this is a reward for the constant progress of humanity. Wu King listened attentively to the soldiers, standing still. After a moment, he smiled smugly, looking forward confidently. A shadow fell across half of his face. He immediately said that this was a childish lie. The soldiers opened their mouths in shock, obediently pressing their hands to their sides. They looked at the commander in fear. Wu King angrily put his hand forward and said that they had robbed them. There were deep wrinkles on his forehead, indicating his bad mood. The soldiers opened their mouths in shock, in a state of shock. Lai Wanwen did not expect to hear this and also opened her mouth in surprise. Her hair fluttered slightly noticeably in the wind. She immediately stood up on A Zheng's head. Placing her palm to her chest, she looked ahead emotionlessly. A strange glow suddenly appeared from A Zhang's mouth. Wu King at this time said, putting his hand forward, that they really accidentally stumbled upon their own world, which is a connecting link and a bridge between numerous kingdoms. Over time, each person's physical qualities continued to improve, and the ability to enter other worlds was now available. The castle still continued to shine brightly, illuminating almost the entire commander's body. He clenched his white-gloved fist and stated, However, when they get to the new realm, the first thing they will do is kill. He pointed his finger at the floor and angrily explained, This is the altar, the largest spatial rift connecting them to the original space. Beneath this was the blood of 800 of their martyrs, but at the same time the bodies of at least tens of thousands of aboriginal people were buried there. Wu King smiled smugly looked forward and said, by killing them, they were able to enter their core space and gain several decades of rapid development. The soldiers opened their mouths in shock. Sweat ran down their faces with excitement when they learned this information. 
Lai Wanwen covered her mouth with her hand and mentally said that this squad and the entire human race had done such a thing. She continued to look ahead, stunned. At this time, Wu King raised his head smugly and told them not to be surprised, because they destroyed several dozen kingdoms in the smaller world. His gaze had a menacing note, and he added that blood was being shed in every space. The soldier widened his eyes in shock, spread his hands in question in front of him, and excitedly asked the question, How is this possible? Another soldier desperately pointed at his uniform and asked, Didn't their uniform indicate that they were defenders? The third soldier clenched his fist indignantly and asked if they really had to kill other races. The fourth one desperately shouted through his tears, That's it, he asked annoyedly. Couldn't they just live in peace without damaging their honor? They all thought indignantly that they had joined the army to stand for justice. They protect their people from invasions, but at the same time they themselves become aggressive and attack other civilians. Commander Wu, who stood in front of them, irritably asked the question, Will the next generations remember this? Their secret was long ago taken to the grave by the dead. And they should talk less about it too. Commander Wu mockingly looked at the shocked faces of the soldiers standing in front of him and mockingly thought how stupid this was. He raised his fist, glowing with magical light, and directed magical energy towards them. The soldiers froze in fear in place, expecting a blow, but the energy flow stopped near them. Commander Wu looked at them, then raised his hand up with his index finger and firmly stated that the universe was like a dark forest. This is a place where the fittest survive. He stood in front of the soldiers. The light from his spiritual power brightly illuminated everything around him, casting the shadow of Commander Wu onto the floor. The soldiers looked at him in shock. He mockingly said that he doubted that if they met a predator in the forest, their reaction would be friendly. Many glowing red eyes appeared around the soldiers. Commander Wu smiled predatorily and said that they would simply have no choice but to fight. He extended his fist, glowing with magical power, and directed it towards the soldiers to intimidate, demonstrating his superiority. They froze in shock, afraid to move. Commander Wu said that this is the well-known law of the jungle. The development of technology must be paid for, but something must be sacrificed for the development of humanity. The soldiers listened to him, their mouths open in shock. One of the soldiers rushed forward to meet Commander Wu and angrily demanded that he not pass off cruelty as something good. He just randomly kills everyone who opposed his aggression. The soldier shouted angrily that they would rather die than follow him. Commander Wu pursed his lips angrily and glared at him, then activated his spiritual energy and moved it into his fist. Then he hit the soldier in the chest with all his strength, piercing his body right through with his energy flow. Splashes of blood gushed out in all directions. The soldier fell defeated to the floor. The three remaining soldiers looked fearfully at the commander and their wounded comrade. Blood spattered across Lai Wanwen's face as she looked on in shock. The soldier lay on the ground, continuing to bleed. He looked up helplessly, his mouth parted. A trickle of blood flowed from his mouth. He wheezed and coughed helplessly, choking on blood. The commander pointed his finger at him and ordered the soldiers to leave him. Let him die. He angrily shouted that they were enjoying what they had already received, but they themselves did not want to work for the good of the empire. Wu King angrily asked, Aren't they too two-faced? Commander Wu then turned around and ordered Lai Wanwen, writing the monster, Ah Zheng, to follow him. Together they approached the portal in the wall, which glowed white, purple, and pink. They entered it and found themselves in a city at night, illuminated by bright spotlights. Lai Wanwen sat on the monster and through her tears in despair asked the question, why? Her body was shaken by sobs. Commander Wu sternly asked, does she have any idea why he leads the bloodiest team in the world? He clenched his fist, through which the soldier's blood still continued to flow. Wu King angrily reported that the other candidates were already dead. Lai Wanwen, riding the monster, slowed down. The commander walked forward and looked back to see where she was. He looked at her sternly, and then at the monster Ah Zheng. The monster backed away in fear, shook and bared its teeth. Lai Wanwen, bursting into tears, said that this was cruel. She covered her face with her hands and burst into tears. The commander looked back irritably, looked at her and asked a question, So what? He just did what he had to do. 
You cannot look for gentle ways in this world. All those who seek them are cowards and weaklings. Such pitiful people must die, he said indignantly. Let's take weaklings and cowards as leaders. They don't even deserve to be on the team, let alone manage. Lai Wanwen sat astride Ah Jong behind him and sobbed loudly. Her monster obediently followed Commander Wu. Wu King said that such people were simply useless in battle. As soon as they feel threatened, they immediately flee the battlefield, forgetting about duty and honor. He looked ahead, seeing a colorful city at night, illuminated by many bright lights. Wu King stopped, and the monster also slowed down. Lai Wanwen, who was sitting on it, was still shaking with sobs. Commander Wu said irritably, If she became a military man, then let her serve with dignity. It is not for such people that millions of ancestors died in wars. Lai Wanwen looked up, tears streaming down her cheeks. She looked in despair at the back of Commander Yu. The word justice was written in large letters on his cloak. Commander Wu stopped in front of two stone lion statues with eyes glowing with red light. Ah Zhang obediently stopped behind him. Commander Wu looked in front of him, where the dark portal was glowing. The stone lion said that he greets the great commander. Then he asked, let him tell you where he was going. Wu King greeted the lion back. Lai Wanwen still continued to cry. Commander Wu glanced irritably at her. Then he turned to the lion statue and calmly replied that he was going to practice. Lev activated the pendant on his chest, and a stream of red light poured out. He reported that the teleport was ready. Please let it pass. Commander Wu sternly told them to follow him. He wants to show something. Let Lai Wanwen not be distracted and watch carefully. Commander Wu took the first step inside the portal. The monster and Lai Wanwen sitting on top of it followed him. Wu King reported that the inhabitants of this world were actually alive. They locked them here. Every day they see how new buildings are being built and how people are having fun. They're not that cruel. At least people are alive. Commander Wu walked confidently along the dark corridor of the portal, and the monster Ajung along with Lai Wanwen followed him. Wu King turned his head to the side, seeing the teleport glowing in a spiral, and took a step inside it. After a while, large veins appeared on his face, his eyes became bloodshot, and he clenched his teeth. Wu King clenched his teeth so hard that cracks appeared. The commander clenched his fist and moved further into the teleport. With his face disfigured from pressure and pain, he shouted that they were starting. Wu King, being inside the glowing portal, shouted out that pathetic people who cannot make a choice will be left with nothing. And the strong, who know exactly what they want, will definitely achieve it. He touched his palm to his chest, then reached into his pocket with his fingers. Wu King took out a small pill from there, looked at it, and decisively popped it into his mouth. Then he said decisively, Go ahead. Lai Wanwen watched as a whirlwind of a dark portal swirled around Commander Wu. He screamed desperately. His eyes glowed red. Drops of blood gushed from his mouth. The more the luminous whirlwind spun him, the more heart-rendingly he screamed in pain. After some time, a long mane of dark hair grew on Commander Wu's head. His torso has grown significantly, covered with huge mounds of muscle. The clothes could not withstand such pressure and shattered into small pieces. In front of Lai Wanwen stood a huge, large monster with one arm. He growled angrily, baring his ravenous teeth. Commander Wu, who had turned into a large human monster, continued to spin in the whirlwind of the portal. Lai Wanwen widened her eyes in shock and thought that he had become twice as big. Suddenly, a black light appeared from the stump of his severed hand, which began to rotate in a circle like a black whirlwind. In place of the stumped arm, a whole and healthy arm appeared. Lai Wanwen asked in shock, what happened to his hand? Her body shook with fear. She thought that first he beats his subordinates to death, and then drinks some strange pill that makes him look like a monster. Wu King turned into a silhouette glowing with white light and shouted out enthusiastically that he felt the power flowing in him. Lai Wanwen shook in fear as she sat astride her monster. Commander Wu shouted in delight that no one could defeat him. He should set a record. The last time he lasted a little less than a minute. The stopwatch began counting. Commander Wu stood on all fours, shaking from tension. He watched the passage of time on a stopwatch. Wu King breathed a sigh of relief and thought this was great. The record was broken. 
He was able to increase the military department record from 47 to 70 seconds. Wu King looked at his result with delight. He thought that the effect of this remedy was truly incredible. Then Commander Wu's huge body fell exhausted to the floor. Lai Wanwen looked at him in shock. Wu King was lying on the floor, and magical, luminous waves emanated from his torso. After some time, his second hand cracked and shattered into small pieces. Standing in front of Lai Wanwen was Commander Wu in his previous appearance. He thought that the military should also expect that using alien serums to treat severed limbs would have little effect. Although strengthening the body has a wonderful effect, Wu King rose to his feet and looked sadly at the stump. He only had one arm again. He stood practically without clothes because it could not withstand the power of his body. Wu King looked back at Lai Wanwen sitting on the monster's head and said that in the future, they would be able to face the dead here more boldly. Decades from now, they will be able to defeat all races. No one will even remember what they did before. Lai Wanwen looked up at him in shock, tears streaming down her cheeks. Commander Wu extended his hand to the side, pointed in the direction with his index finger, and told them to move forward and someone would notice them. He added that he told and showed things that would help her understand the world. It was better for her to unlock top-tier beasts as quickly as possible to reduce the loss of people on the battlefield. The commander looked at her demandingly. Lai Wanwen hesitantly turned her head towards the dark teleporter. Wu King told her not to give him a reason to be disappointed. Next time he returns, she will not spare the weak. He exhaled thoughtfully, turned around and walked towards the exit from the teleporter. Lai Wanwen desperately lowered her head and silently sat on the head of the monster of Zheng. Wu King smiled maliciously and said that his mental abilities had improved significantly, so he needed to find someone in practice. He added that Shen Jinghong should pray to avoid being seen by him. After some time, Wu King emerged from the teleporter, which was located between two stone lions. The stone lion tried to ask him something, but the commander abruptly cut him off and ordered him to provide him with clothes. Leo obediently replied that it would be done. After some time, Stone Lion looked after the retreating Commander Wu, dressed in a military uniform with a dark cloak on his back. At this time, Ah Zheng was slowly walking along the dark corridor of the teleport. Riding on top of it, shedding bitter tears, was Lai Wanwen. She turned her head towards the dark, glowing teleporter and sadly said that she was scared. She heard someone's voice that said, There is nothing to be afraid of. We must go forward. Lai Wanwen widened her eyes in surprise. The voice told her not to look around. Let him not look around. She should only look straight ahead. Lai Wanwen clasped her palms together in front of her and squinted her eyes to the side. She saw dark stains, from which large eyes glowing with white light appeared. Lai Wanwen looked into those eyes, and the eyes looked at her. The eyes disappeared. After a while, the voice said that she did not need to be afraid. She doesn't need his strength. She's already strong. Lai Wanwen confirmed this hesitantly. She said that she allowed him to temporarily be in her body. It offended him. She firmly ordered Ah Zhang to go forward. The monster walked quickly. Lai Wanwen closed her eyes cowardly and clenched her fists. Then she lay down on the monster's head and heard a voice that said when she really decided to figure things out, let her find the guy she met today. Then the voice asked, is she still afraid? Lai Wanwen got down on all fours, raised her head, and looked in front of her. She remembered a tall tower surrounded by a circular ring. Then I remembered Shen Jinghong's face. He took the red umbrella from her and said that he would borrow it and return it when he got the chance. Lai Wanwen clenched her fists resolutely and said that she was no longer afraid. After a while, Wu King walked to the military logistics hall numbered Zio one. He thought that Ling Qiu in the Lai Wan military department was taking over the logistics department. People above the squadron commander are now recovering from wounds in the rear. Wu King wondered irritably, who could dare to use Hall Zia one He walked to the door, through the glass of which light from the hall appeared, and leaned his palm against the scanner. The screen on the door lit up, onto which an image from a surveillance camera from the hall was transmitted. In the middle of the hall, Shen Jinghong was lying on the floor. Wu King angrily commanded him to leave the hall immediately, to be here in a minute. He added irritably that the commander of the 3rd Army of the 7th Division needed for. 
On the inside of the door, there was a screen on which one could see the dissatisfied face of Commander Wu. Shen Jinghong sleepily opened his eyes and asked, Already? He slowly sat down on the floor and sleepily replied that okay, he understood. Shen Jinghong began to put on his clothes. Wu King angrily watched him through the screen and irritably wondered what. Did you sleep? Then he swore angrily. Shen Jinghong put on his boots, took an umbrella, and headed towards the exit. As he walked, he took out a cell phone from his coat pocket, where the latest news was written on the screen. It said that the professor suspected Shen Jinghong of falsifying his qualifications. Journalists asked why Shen Jinghong has not yet received due punishment. The next news was that the search for Shen Jinghong's family was unsuccessful. Most likely, he is an orphan. After reading this, he thought that there were already a lot of rumors about him. They weren't allowing him to rest. Shen Jinghong put the phone back in his pocket and stretched sleepily. He thought with a smile that this was expected. Wu King watched furiously as Shen Jinghong was in no hurry to vacate the hall. After some time, the doors to hall numbers were one opened, and bright light poured out. Wu King looked angrily into Shen Jinghong's eyes. He thought displeasedly, which was not surprising. This is just the squad leader. Although, he had never met such a title before. Shen Jinghong looked at Commander Wu and walked past him. Wu King angrily ordered him to stop. He pointed his finger at Shen Jinghong and angrily asked the question, How can you be in the rear department without a uniform? Does he have any idea what consequences await him for sleeping in the training room? And when he sees the elder, shouldn't he salute? Shen Jinghong thought that he was lingering in this body. Not completely free yet. He stopped, turned his head to Commander Wu and, smiling friendly, said to forgive him, he forgot. Shen Jinghong put two fingers to the temple of his head saluted Commander Wu and reported that he was new here. He will listen to his instructions. Wu King looked at him displeasedly and thought that today was the same day that Wan's logistics department had reported. Shen Jinghong, smiling cheerfully, waved goodbye to Commander Wu, turned around and walked forward along the corridor. Wu King roared furiously for him to stop. His fist glowed brightly with energy. The commander's palms shot up with energy lightning. He said irritably, if I understood correctly, then he is that scoundrel. Then he angrily shouted his name, Shen Jinghong. Wu King swung his fist and a wave of yellow-red spiritual energy shot out from his fist. Shen Jinghong squinted his eyes to the side and noticed this. Wu King furiously shouted the spell, Death Deity. Then he threateningly wished Shen Jinghong death. Without turning, he repelled this attack with his back. The energy wave flowed backwards towards Commander Yu. He flew back with speed, leaving fiery streaks on the floor under his boots. Wu King stopped and crouched down, keeping his balance so as not to fall. He thought in shock that this space was completely different from the Earth. Wu King thought sadly that he had been humiliated in this way. He was dumbfounded and wondered how it could happen that he was beaten. How is this possible? His eyes were bloodshot from anger and humiliation, and sweat streamed down his face. Wu King's body shook with anger. He asked himself, isn't Shen Jinghong a weakling who avoids war? Why couldn't he kill him with one blow? Kanandir Yu looked at the deep grooves on the floor left by his feet. He shouted threateningly that Shen Jinghong was a corpse. He raised his hand, unbuttoned his cloak, and threw it aside. Shen Jinghong and Wu King stood opposite and looked into each other's eyes angrily. Shen Jinghong and Wu King stood opposite, preparing for battle. Magical waves of white color emanated from Commander Wu, causing the empty sleeve of his military jacket to flutter like the wind. Shen Jinghong studied him, wondering if the squad leader's strength was at that level. Maybe because of his rebirth, the system of power levels also changed? Shen Jinghong clenched his fists and in turn activated his energy power. Light blue waves shot up from his body in different directions. His eyes burned with determination, glowing white. The system reminded him through an alert that his current level was four. Transformation was available to him. The system then asked, should I use it? He decisively ordered to begin. Energy white blue circles were rapidly spinning around him from top to bottom. Then black energy streams appeared. A moment later, he transformed. Shen Jinghong's head and torso were covered with metal armor. 
visually, he began to look like Iron Man. His hair rose up in a thick shock. On the body, symbols glowed with blue neon light. Shen Jinghong looked ahead resolutely, ready to fight. Wu King shuddered at what he saw, his eyes and mouth wide open in surprise. Shen Jinghong exhaled to calm down and unclenched his fists. He thought it was better not to fight people from the department. This will leave them with psychological trauma. He said out loud, turning to the shocked Commander Wu, that he must kill all enemies. Let him complete the task and return. After these words, he turned away, saying over his shoulder that he would not fight him. Let him go. Shen Jinghong walked decisively down the corridor, leaving black streams of energy in the air behind him. The neon lights on his metal armor glowed brightly in the darkness of the corridor. When Shen Jinghong had already moved forward significantly, Wu King clenched the fist on his only hand and activated the energy power of a fiery red color. His aura became like hellfire. He gritted his teeth angrily and thought that the soldiers of the Empire should not endure such humiliation. He let out a battle cry and angrily shouted that he would fight with his full strength. Wu King's eyes burned with an angry fire. Her body increased significantly, and the muscles appeared in large bulges through the skin. His clothes, unable to withstand such power, shattered into small rags. Spiritual power revolved around him, from bottom to top, in wide rings. He kicked off the floor and jumped, raising his fist to strike, and rushed at Shen Jinghong, shouting that he would not believe that he was stronger. His fist glowed with golden light, and the aura behind him surged upward in powerful golden pillars. The energy rays combined against this background, depicting the face of a predatory beast. Wu King shouted intimidatingly as he prepared to strike with a powerful blow. Shen Jinghong calmly walked forward, not paying attention to this. Behind him, Wu King turned into a fiery clot of energy, from which golden rays shone powerfully. Having overtaken Shen Jinghong, he raised his luminous fist to strike, which suddenly looked like the predatory face of a lion. Wu King, his eyes flashing angrily, shouted a warning about the imminent death of Shen Jinghong. He hit him in the back, but Shen Jinghong activated his magical defense, deflecting it. His defense was so powerful that Shen Jinghong did not even feel Commander Wu's blow, and he flew back with great speed. While flying, blood gushed out from Wu King's mouth. He fell forcefully to the floor, throwing up his arms and legs. Shen Jinghong, without stopping, looked over his shoulder and asked in surprise, What? Then he stopped and looked at Commander Yu. He was kneeling behind him. Wu King pressed his fist to his chest in shock and opened his mouth. He thought in shock, how is this possible? A power greater than that of a continent. Wu King gritted his teeth angrily, looked at Shen Jinghong's back and resolutely began to rise to his feet, resting his hand on the floor. His face twisted into an angry grimace. Shen Jinghong asked mockingly over his shoulder, is the military's strength really that minuscule? He then asked another question, is the captain secretly killing recruits? Who does he think he is? Wu King widened his eyes in shock and thought, How dare he? He yelled angrily, How could such a brat be trained at the headquarters of the military department? Wu King extended his hand towards where the pieces of his uniform were located. He magically pulled the bottle lying in his torn pocket towards him. Wu King, smiling maliciously, looked at the white bottle in his palm and said that Shen Jinghong is a pathetic idiot who avoids war and refuses to go into battle. Shen Jinghong turned his head towards him irritably, then turned away and told him to go back to the front line and do what he had to do. Let him forget today. He calmly added that there was no point in taking revenge, it would be worse for everyone. Commander Wu looked after him humiliatedly. Streams of blood kept flowing down his chin. Wu King said angrily, of course. Today he is, and tomorrow tens of thousands of idiots avoiding war will come to the military registration and enlistment office. After these words, he opened the bottle and poured all the pills in there into his mouth. He angrily added that he must remember what it means to be a soldier of the empire. After some time, Commander Wu turned into a large, muscular monster with a long mane of dark hair and two powerful arms. From the energy... The floor under his feet glowed with a circle of fire. Wu King let out a predatory growl. His eyes glowed with red furious fire. Suddenly, red tentacles began to appear from his face. A moment later, 
Commander Wu's face turned into an octopus with red eyes. Then his powerful arms began to transform into the limbs of a lizard with many sharp spikes and long claws. A moment later, a long tail, covered with spikes and large scales, grew from Commander Wu's body. Shen Jinghong walked along the corridor, and behind him Wu King turned into a huge monster with the body of a lizard and the head of an octopus with many tentacles. Powerful energy flows emanated from him. Wu King growled angrily that he would tell him what it means to have a goal that you will pursue to the end. There was no answer, and Commander Wu called out to Shen Jinghong questioningly, calling him a freak. Shen Jinghong stopped, sighed in disappointment, and said that he initially thought that he was useful. Now he began to doubt it. Shen Jinghong resolutely clenched his fists, from which streams of energy shot upward like black rays. After a while, thin black rays began to shoot upward from his entire body. He stood with a determined expression on his face, expecting an attack from behind. Behind him, with flashing red eyes, Commander Wu bared his mouth predatorily. Shen Jinghong thoughtfully asked the question, Is this really the world that he wants to protect? After some time, a bright full moon appeared between the dark clouds and the starry night sky. The lights were no longer on in the windows of the city houses. Aircraft were flying off from the takeoff pad of a high military rear tower. A woman's hand with a neat nude manicure was holding a personal file with a photograph of Shen Jinghong. It said that he was 19 years old and his abilities were unknown. Ling Qiu held it in front of her, studying it thoughtfully. Suddenly she heard some sounds behind her, looked back and saw Lai Wanwen approaching her from behind, riding the monster ajun. Ling Qiu lowered her hand with Shen Jinghong's personal file. In her other hand, she held a neatly folded military uniform. And Zheng became wary, his eyes sparkling and his huge fangs bared. Lai Wanwen looked ahead in fear. Ah Zheng bowed his head to the ground, stopping in front of Lin Qiu. She looked up and said that she was the captain of the second team of the Imperial Army, Lin Qiu. Now she will read her the orders from her superiors. Lai Wanwen pursed her lips cowardly, and a wave like gray vibration emanated from her body. Ling Qiu, holding a folded military uniform in front of her, read, thanks to Lai Wanwen's special talent, she can immediately join the battles by summoning giant werewolf beasts. It is better for her to be in the rear, so that it is more convenient for her to move to the front line at the right time. Promote Lai Wanwen to the rank of captain, and also give her the third level of authority. The giant werewolf beast will help the Empire wage war. He is forbidden to leave the rear. Lai Wanwen looked down at the piece of paper Lin Qiyu was holding. She saw Shen Jinghong's photo there. Lai Wanwen stretched out her hand and pointed her index finger at Shen Jinghong's personal file and asked, Is this guy also in the rear now? Lin Qiyu tensed and looked at her sternly. She remembered Shen Jinghong angrily throwing his ID at her. Lin Qiyu sternly replied that he was not here. Lai Wanwen sighed in disappointment, lowering her head sadly. She sadly told Ah Zhang that they were leaving. He obediently rose to his feet and took a few steps forward. Ling Qiu stood at his side and watched them walk away. When Ah Zhang and Lai Wanwen moved away a little, and she could only see the monster's fluffy tail, Ling Qiu said with displeasure that they were leaving so quickly. Then she added through clenched teeth that the coward who ran away from the war had already had a negative impact on the basis of the Empire's fighting power. She angrily crumpled the piece of paper in her hand that had information from Shen Jinghong's personnel file printed on it. Ling Qiu crumpled the white sheet into a ball shape and threw it onto the asphalt. The paper ball fell, hit the asphalt, and bounced to the side. Ling Qiu clenched a fist in one hand and continued to hold her form in the other. She took a decisive step forward, lifting her high-heeled gray boot over the paper ball. Then she stepped on it with force, crushing it under the sole of her boot. Ling Qiu said angrily, no matter how strong Shen Jinghong is, he violated the orders of his superiors and outraged the dignity of the empire. She, overcome with anger and irritation, walked along the night street, glowing with a blue-white magical light. After some time, Lai Wanwen, having taken off some of her clothes and boots, was sleeping peacefully on the head of the monster Zheng. She lay on her back, with the back of her hand pressed to her forehead and her mouth slightly open, from which saliva flowed. Her sharp sword lay nearby. Ah Zheng was awake, 
His eyes were wide open. He vigilantly guarded her sleep. Suddenly, Lai Wanwen jumped up in fear, opening her eyes wide. She fearfully activated her spiritual energy, which took on the outline of a black monster. And then her spiritual energy transformed into a huge black hand with long claws and moved out towards Lai Wanwen, who was listening carefully to the sounds. She heard the voices of four girls, among whom was a dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit. They were having fun discussing something. Lai Wanwen stood on her feet on Ah Zheng's head, and her spiritual energy towered majestically above her, taking the form of a black, tall monster figure. She clearly heard the laugh of a dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit. Lai Wanwen listened carefully again and heard the battle going on in the training hall number Xian One. Shen Jinghong stood in front of the monster that Wu King had turned into. Black energy streams emanated upward from him. Wu King stood on his hind clawed paws and let out a predatory roar. Golden energy circles shone around him. Shen Jinghong angrily looked at the Wu King monster and rushed at him with lightning speed. Wu King stood on his hind legs, which looked like human legs, and raised his front limbs, which looked like clawed hands, in front of him. Behind him on the floor lay his long tail, covered with spikes. Wu King's monster prepared to repel Shen Jinghong's attack. His eyes glowed red, his mouth with sharp teeth opened predatorily. Wu King quickly put forward, towards Shen Jinghong, a powerful, huge fist. Shen Jinghong avoided it by mockingly saying that it was too slow. Wu King again tried to hit Shen Jinghong with his powerful fist from above, but he managed to jump to the side. Shen Jinghong extended his hand covered in metal armor. Small swirls of energy began to glow around the hand. After a while, a sharp sword appeared in his hand. When Wu King, swinging his fist with force, tried to punch Shen Jinghong, he raised his sword and stuck it into the stomach area of Wu King's monster. He screamed desperately, and Shen Jinghong thrust the sword deeper into the monster's body. Blood gushed out. Shen Jinghong continued to press on the sword, which had already pierced Wu King's body. The blood scattered in large drops in different directions. Monster Wu King screamed desperately. Shen Jinghong glared at him and abruptly pulled the sword out of his body. A stream of light poured through the hole from the sword. Wu King flew to the side, splattering everything with his blood. White, thin rays of energy emanated from his body, and red blood mixed with green mucus flowed from the wound. Monster Wu King roared in shock, asking, How is this possible? He sadly reported that he sacrificed his own hand in order to have talent. His eyes became bloodshot, and he added in despair that he had given up his human body in exchange for power. Then he, desperately grabbing his head with his clawed hands, from which red tentacles were developing in different directions, desperately asked the question, why is he losing to some recruit? Shen Jinghong lowered the tip of his sword and watched as the monster Wu King, who was squatting in front of him and holding his head in despair, was crushed. Shen Jinghong asked sternly, and who did he donate them to? Something began to happen to the monster Wu King. His body began to shake. His eyes changed color. If before this his eyes were white, now one eye has become gray, the other green. Monster Wu King roared at the alien race. In the era of 10,000 races, he became the first to awaken his talent. Then another voice came from the monster's body, which announced that the great people of the mass had accepted his offering and bestowed upon him the favor of God himself. Monster Wu King holding his head in his hands, said that countless people were rooting for him. Shen Jinghong was just a freak, abandoned by thousands of people. He then asked the question, is he jealous of him? Another voice was heard from the monster's body, which said that the great people of Mesa would gradually take control of his body and tell the world about the vile nature of pathetic people. Shen Jinghong raised his heavy sword in front of him, laughed and asked, to be sacrificed, to be desired. Is this the reason why he is so desperate for power? Wu King in the body of a monster looked at his powerful hand and replied, In this chaotic era of justice, these are just his tools to gain fame, prestige, and women. His body was shaking violently. A second voice from the monster's body asked the question, Haven't people been praying for exactly these things for thousands of years? Shen Jinghong suggested that Wu King had a split personality for too long. He himself stopped understanding what he was talking about. 
Monster Wu King sank down on all fours and closed his eyes. Then he raised his hands and slammed his fists hard onto the floor. Wu King's voice in the monster's body said that he was as sober as ever. By killing him, he will immediately become a national hero. Then a second voice from the monster's body said that the people of Mesa could feel the threat coming from him. Today they will send God's punishment to destroy all foreigners in the world. Shen Jinghong exhaled, clenched his fists and stood up straight, legs spread wide. Black energy swirled around him in black circles. A moment later, Shen Jinghong appeared in his human form without the metal armor. A black cloud flew out of his body and soared high into the air. Shen Jinghong thought that Commander Wu was a war veteran and had lost a lot on the battlefield. So I became a little crazy. He seemed to be a descendant of a famous family, with strong convictions in his heart. There is a lot of bitterness in it that is difficult to express. Shen Jinghong clenched his fist. Closing his eyes, he calmly added that apparently he had misunderstood him. Then he frowned angrily, opened his eyes wide and angrily shouted that from the very top of his head to his fingertips, Wu King is not worthy of being called a man at all. Monster Wu King, covered in blood and green mucus, growled angrily that enough is enough. He's just a weakling sitting in the rear. Freak! After these words, he waved his hands, fiery energy flames glowing brightly from his fists. Monster Wu King directed these flames at Shen Jinghong's, who was calmly standing in front of him without armor. Between Shen Jinghong and the Wu King monster, a black cloud hovered in the air. Shen Jinghong watched the flames approaching him, stretched out his hand and pulled in the black cloud. The black cloud absorbed the hot flames, creating a protective barrier. Shen Jinghong said indignantly that he had no right to speak about him like that. Monster Wu King put in a lot of effort to break through the protective barrier, but the black cloud continued to absorb the streams of fire emanating from his hands. Wu King asked in shock, What kind of devil power is this? Shen Jinghong said irritably that Wu King is more inhuman than him. He continued to hold the black cloud in front of him. After a while, the monster Wu King sighed tiredly and lowered his hands. Shen Jinghong, seeing this, said gloatingly, Strangulation. He resolutely extended his hand clenched into a fist. At this time, a black cloud with flames inside rose up above the Wu King monster, pulling his hands inside. It turned into a red and black tornado, spinning over the monster at high speed. Monster Wu King screamed desperately, trying to escape. Blood and green mucus gushed from the tornado in different directions. Wu King cursed angrily. Shen Jinghong looked at him angrily and wished him a safe journey. After a while, standing opposite Shen Jinghong was the monster Wu King without both arms. A blood-black cloud hovered nearby, forming a portal. Shen Jinghong said, In the next life, he advises you to think carefully about your behavior. Monster Wu King stared at him blankly. An alien voice inside him said that hoping for understanding from people was indeed too high an expectation. Shen Jinghong raised his palm in front of him, from which streams of red energy shot forward like sharp swords. He looked at the Wu King monster without pity or regret and waved his hand. Energy rushed towards him like a red-gray river, from which sharp rays periodically protruded. Monster Wu King watched as it rapidly approached him. The tentacles on his head darted randomly in different directions. Many sharp spines protruded from his tense back. Shen Jinghong closed his eyes and exhaled decisively. With a wave of his hand, he sent a violent stream of energy directly at the monster Wu King, who widened his eyes in shock and opened his mouth. He growled in fear, sticking out his long tongue forward. Memories from life flashed before the eyes of Commander Wu King in the monster's body. He saw a small, sad boy kneeling with his shoulders downcast. It was Wu King, who was seven years old. He was in a hall paved with gray tiles, where the ancestors of the Wu clan rested. Then he remembered how, at the age of eighteen, he fought fiercely and bravely with a monster that grabbed his arm with a powerful tentacle. Wu King was dressed in military uniform and was holding a machine gun in his hands. Everything around was covered in smoke. Wu King trying to escape from the monster's strong grip, fired his machine gun into the air. Then he heard the alien voice of the monster, who told him to sacrifice his hand and get everything he wanted. Wu King, trying to free himself from the monster, 
pulled out a sharp knife, and in one fell swoop cut off his own hand, which was tightly wrapped around the tentacles. He furiously ordered the monster to get away. Then Wu King remembered how for twenty-seven years he stood on a hill and looked from above at a huge city with beautiful buildings. An alien voice inside his body said that only with their help could he achieve everything. He should be immensely grateful for this. Wu King angrily punched and retorted that he never needed them. Let them get out of his soul. The alien voice ordered him to spread the news that all these people are invaders. Let him break their will. Wu King shouted furiously, No way. The truth about the war will never be denigrated. With these words, he hit the wooden fence with his fist, which shattered into small pieces. Suddenly one of his eyes glowed green, his face was distorted by an evil grin, and an alien voice inside him mockingly said that it was not for him to decide. Wu King's body obeyed the monster inside, who said that control over his consciousness was in his hands. He has long been a monster with a split personality. Wu King is in the body of a monster, waiting for death, he sadly repeated, a monster. Then his eyes opened wide as he realized that he had become a monster. Wounded in the stomach, the armless monster Wu King, bleeding with blood and green mucus, looked at the approaching deadly stream of energy. A second before his death, he said doomedly, goodbye to the world. Meanwhile in the city, the roof of one of the tall buildings exploded. As a result, fragments and other building materials that were used in the construction of this building scattered in all directions. From the explosion, a huge flash of fire erupted upward, quickly spreading through the air. This created a deafening sound, accompanied by an explosion and falling building materials. People screamed in fear. Someone asked the question, what's going on? Several girls froze on the road, looking around and searching for the source of the sound. The guys walking along the sidewalk opened their mouths in surprise. Someone asked a question, looking up, what happened there? Ling Qiu froze in place, holding a gray shirt in her hands. She looked up expectantly, not the least bit afraid. After a moment, she opened her mouth in shock and continued to look up. Ling Qiu said nothing, being in a state of shock. A moment later, still holding the shirt in her hand, she turned around. She fixed her purposeful gaze forward, quickly starting to run down the street. From her movement, wind came in all directions. Ling Qiu ran purposefully along the road where cars usually drove. She noticed a burning two-story house in front of her. Its entire first and second floors were engulfed in bright red flames, from which black smoke emanated into the air. The roof of this one was also engulfed in flames, destroying everything in its path. The moon above the burning house shone brightly, illuminating the streets. Meanwhile, the fire spread from the building to a pole on which there were wires for lifts. Ling Qiu looked forward carefully, clenching her teeth tightly. She still continued to run at full speed. Due to the strong wind, her hair began to fly to the side. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Elder Zhang levitated in a white space that had no other colors. It didn't even have any furniture. Someone's voice addressed him and said that vibrations were noticed at the support site of the external circuit, interrupting the basic energy. Elder Zhang closed his eyes and peacefully continued to hover in the air. His shadow fell slightly onto the floor of the white space. He suddenly said through tightly compressed lips, on which a gray mustache hung, that girl with incredible talent must have returned today. He added that the outgoing fluctuations were not unusual. Deep wrinkles appeared on Elder Zhang's forehead, as well as under his eyes. Gray eyebrows drooped slightly over his eyes. Elder Zhang had a tight bun of gray hair tied on his head. The voice agreed with him and replied, Okay. He said that in this case, he did not need to send inner circuit people to investigate them. Elder Zhang bent down slightly while still hovering in the air. He placed his hands together which began to hide in the wide sleeves. The voice speaking to Elder Zhang said that let the commanders of the outer layer units then deal with it themselves. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Ling Qiu suddenly braked with her snow-white shoes on the asphalt. This movement resulted in an unpleasant sound, the soles rubbing against the stone road. Ling Qiu leaned on her knees, trying to even out her breathing after a long run. Drops of sweat flowed down all over her body from fatigue. A slightly noticeable steam emanated from her hot body to the sides. She froze in place and did not move anymore. 
Ling Kiyu looked forward and noticed a sign announcing important information. Suddenly, in the black smoke, she noticed a strange figure in a long cloak walking towards her. The human figure slowly dragged its legs, thereby making a not very pleasant sound. Ling Kiyu still continued to lean her hands on her knees, carefully looking forward. She became wary and pressed her lips tightly together. A foot in a white boot appeared from the black smoke. The sole, in contact with the asphalt, made an unpleasant sound. The smoke still continued to spread through the air in huge clouds, without evaporating anywhere. Ling Kiyu clenched her fists and stood in a fighting pose. She looked forward threateningly and shouted at him not to move. Shen Jinghong froze in the midst of black smoke. He looked ahead of him with composure. Suddenly, he received a notification that he, as the owner, was thanked. In this, it was written that the tempering for killing gods had been raised to the fifth level. He had a new note skill unlocked for killing gods. Shen Jinghong smiled and greeted someone. He continued to look forward with a mischievous smile. Shen Jinghong held a strong red umbrella in his hand and took slow steps in the black smoke. His gaze was completely expressionless at the moment. His cloak fluttered slightly in the wind. Ling Kiyu angrily fixed her gaze in front of her and asked the question, Is it him? A slightly noticeable blush appeared on her face from anger. Shen Jinghong was surprised. He didn't expect to see this. He opened his mouth and asked the question at the same time as Ling Kiyu, Is it her? He looked ahead with confusion. Ling Kiyu, confused, scratched her head and brought it back, saying that she was just looking for him. She looked at him seriously tucking a strand of short hair behind her ear. Shen Jinghong closed his eyes, exhaled and lowered his shoulders a little. He threw the red umbrella over his shoulder and looked at Ling Kiyu standing in front. She looked at him suspiciously and pressed her lips tightly together. Shen Jinghong slightly moved his index finger away from the umbrella and said with a smug smile, First of all, he needs to deal with the sight of that explosion. Ling Kiyu frowned and looked forward, saying that right now the explosion doesn't matter in the slightest. She began to take confident steps forward. A white aura emanated from her in all directions, branching into different patterns. Shen Jinghong continued to hold the umbrella on his shoulders and stood attentively in place. He said that it would be better for her to do the things that are part of her duties. He looked forward menacingly, not afraid of anything. Ling Kyu at this time angrily said that if he was allowed to continue to drag out his miserable existence, it would bring much more harm to the Empire than any explosion. She looked at him furiously, opening her mouth wide and pronouncing every word clearly. At this time, an aura still continued to emanate brightly from her body, rising into the atmosphere. Shen Jinghong continued to stand still, but had already lowered his umbrella. Ling Kiyu was already next to him and said with feigned composure that he was an escape route for countless people. She added that this path should not exist. An aura emanated upward from her body in bright stripes, illuminating everything around her. Shen Jinghong was still standing in place, listening to her carefully. Suddenly, Ling Kiyu's leggings took on a scaly pattern starting from the end of her boots. She spread her legs apart and this made an unpleasant sound. The top and white cardigan disappeared from her body, and a scaly pattern began to appear on her skin. The jeans also disappeared from her body, leaving only a gray belt and underwear. Ling Kiyu put her hand to the side and said with a smug smile that it was a small battle suit that she had been wearing since childhood. She said special materials and technology gradually added to the load as she grew. A white aura continued to emanate from her in all directions, slightly overwhelming the atmosphere around her. Ling Kiu added at this time, looking ahead threateningly, that the suit now weighed 50 kilograms and the Gen Jin sword was allocated by the military. She added, putting on a smug smile, that all of this was just meant to hold her back. Shen Jinghong frowned and looked at her with displeasure. He felt no other emotions other than composure. At the same time, Ling Kiu's clothes completely disappeared. She stood in front of Shen Jinghong completely naked. There was a smug smile on her face. She proudly straightened her back, spreading her legs and arms to the sides for better comfort. After some time, she wore a blue suit, which had mesh fabric in some places. Ling Kyu frowned and looked forward angrily. Clenching her fists, she said, at the same time, in addition to holding back, it also gives her support. 
she added that now, whether it be in strength or speed, she has a noticeable advantage. Shen Jinghong did not feel any emotion and held the red umbrella tightly in his hand. Ling Qiu smiled complacently and looked forward victoriously, saying that this was the peak of her strength. Shen Jinghong exhaled tiredly and looked down. He still continued to be silent, standing in one place. Ling Qiu frowned and admitted that at first she could not see his true strength. She added that she had already shown all the respect she should have shown. She shouted, it didn't matter to her whether it was for the sake of the dignity of the empire or out of a desire to please her pride. She wanted him to fall right at the sight of this explosion today. Her gaze was stubborn and threateningly looking ahead. Shen Jinghong looked forward and calmly said that she had sacrificed a lot. He added that she still couldn't defeat him. Ling Qiu shouted that she couldn't believe her eyes. She looked forward angrily. She jumped and put her hands forward. A fiery bird appeared from above next to her, spreading its wings, from which sparks emanated in all directions. Shen Jinghong looked at this in surprise. He realized that she had become faster. He frowned slightly and pressed his lips tightly together. Suddenly he clenched his fists and extended his arms to the sides. A black panther appeared above him, resting its clawed paws on the ground. From this, black light emanated in all directions. Ling Qiu swung her fist, which emanated a white aura. She opened her mouth, monitoring her breathing. Shen Jinghong also swung his fist, from which Zigza-shaped threads emanated to the side. His entire skin was blue, and strange blue stripes appeared on his eyes and face. A moment later, their fists and auras collided in impact. The two auras collided and began to move away from each other towards the owners. Suddenly, the panther opened its mouth threateningly and the bird, flapping its wings, began to move away back. An explosion occurred near Ling Qiu and Shen Jinghong, breaking the asphalt under their feet. Destroyed parts of the asphalt began to fly in all directions. Ling Qiu still continued to punch Shen Jinghong with her fist. Shen Jinghong's black aura began to defeat Ling Qiu's white aura. Ling Qiu's hand began to shake from tension. She clenched her teeth and stubbornly looked forward, frowning. She thought that her strength was already at its limit. She still won't be able to win. Shen Jinghong's black aura branched out next to her face. Ling Qiu continued to stand stubbornly in place. Tears appeared in her eyes and stopped flowing copiously from her eyes. She continued to frown from extreme fatigue. Suddenly, a circle of energy field appeared next to their fists with small lines of lightning emanating from the sides. Shen Jinghong was surprised and began to watch this warily, while Ling Qiu gathered her strength and hit as hard as possible. Suddenly, Shen Jinghong's suit began to fall apart into small particles that began to fall down. This was all accompanied by a loud crash. Suddenly, a system notification alert appeared above it. It said that his god-killing equipment was found to be 11% damaged. The alert asked him if he was willing to use 1 on 100 points to restore it. Shen Jinghong looked dumbfounded as the suit continued to slowly fall off from his hand. Ling Qiu opened her mouth in shock, not expecting to see this. At this time, another alert appeared that killing alien werewolf beasts could earn more points. It was written there that the number of points available to the owner was 5,000. The alert asked if it confirmed the equipment was repaired. Shen Jinghong looked sideways and said that he confirmed. Two zigzag-shaped stripes glowed on his forehead. At this time, Shen Jinghong and Ling Qiu continued to hold their fists, from which a blue glow began to emanate. They stubbornly clenched their teeth, waiting for the moment when one of them would give up first. Ling Qiu opened her mouth in shock as she looked at this. After a moment, she looked at Shen Jinghong standing in front of her and clenched her teeth in dissatisfaction and anger. Shen Jinghong remained standing there without any emotion. Bright stripes appeared on his body, as if he had been programmed by a computer. Suddenly, Shen Jinghong regained his human appearance. Black smoke began to rise up from it again. His cloak fluttered slightly in the light wind. Shen Jinghong said, looking down a little, that she should go back. He behaved completely calmly, without experiencing any other emotions associated with anger. Ling Qiu continued to punch. Her whole body was shaking from tension. She stood in the middle of the destroyed asphalt and barely rested her right foot on the destroyed parts of it. 
Shen Jinghong advised her to return to where she belonged. He looked at her trembling fist and said without any emotion that this evening he had already asked someone the same. But he did not listen to him. He said sarcastically that he was very sorry. Ling Qiu looked down in shock, clenching her fists. She opened her mouth. Moments later, she pursed her lips in displeasure and frowned deeply from the rage overwhelming her. Her whole body began to shake with indignation. Shen Jinghong walked up to her and patted her on the shoulder, saying that for proud people like her, admitting defeat must have been difficult. Ling Qiu lowered her head and her shoulders in shock. Shen Jinghong walked past her, leaving her behind. He threw it over his back to her. However, she can only come to terms with it. Ling Qiu continued to stand among the rubble of the destroyed asphalt. She sank down on it, sitting on her knees. She clenched her teeth angrily and looked down furiously. Moments later, she reached out with her hand to the stones of the destroyed asphalt. Her hands were still shaking as she tried to pick it up. Ling Qiu said dumbfoundedly, trying hard to breathe, that she was admitting defeat. She added that she will return to where she belongs. There was only misunderstanding and despair in her eyes. Her nose was shining very brightly red with regret. Ling Qiu said at this time, only as long as she does not have the right to stand in front of him, she will not ask him for anything. She continued to sit next to the cracks and broken parts of the asphalt. After some time, a crescent moon shone brightly in the sky. Cumulus clouds floated smoothly across the night sky, slightly blocking the stars. Meanwhile, elsewhere, there was a huge staircase leading up to the building. Lai Wanwen found herself in front of the entrance to some establishment, where a girl was explaining important information to other three girls. Their conversation was slurred, but their voices carried loudly enough. Lai Wanwen thought that she should not have continued to exist in this world. She didn't even know if this person still remembered her. She clenched her fist purposefully and looked forward defiantly. She imagined a figure standing behind her with two horns, and thought that now that he was back, it was her turn to protect him. Lai Wanwen still continued to purposefully clench her fists, tensing her whole body. She sat on Ah Zheng's red mane. Suddenly she opened her eyes in surprise. She remembered how strange blue-eyed birds with four eyes flew on their powerful and huge wings across the night sky. They waved their powerful wings proudly and complacently. Suddenly one of the birds looked threateningly to the side with its four eyes. The eye of this bird was very predatory and threatening. They were a race of large-headed birds, a very powerful alien species. The bird fixed its gaze on the fragments that were connected to each other. Between the rubble, there was a huge hole with a large space. Next to this, there were many other smaller pieces of debris that lay on the destroyed ground. Lai Wanwen sat in the hole between the slabs, desperately clutching a red umbrella to herself. She looked out of the hole at the night sky and sighed sadly. The bright moon illuminated the entrance to her shelter made of slabs from dangerous creatures. Suddenly, her stomach made a sound signaling hunger. Lai Wanwen's face was completely covered in abrasions and bruises. She looked down and told her not to growl. Suddenly, she heard something strange and looked ahead in shock. She opened her mouth slightly in shock. Looking up at the sky, she noticed that there were many large-headed birds of a very powerful alien species flying there. The mighty birds flapped their wings, stalking their prey from below. Lai Wanwen folded her hands in prayer, placing the umbrella on her knees, and turned to her grandmother, asking for blessings. She added, continuing to pray, may she not let this huge bird eat and grab her. Lai Wanwen's entire body was covered in abrasions and bruises. Suddenly she opened her eyes in shock, hearing strange sounds. She fearfully pressed her hands even tighter to each other. Lai Wanwen opened her mouth in shock, and there was only panic in her eyes. A bird of prey flew near her hiding place, carefully examining the entire space with its four red eyes. The entire body of the bird was brightly illuminated by the crescent moon that was in the sky. Lai Wanwen was hiding in the middle of a destroyed house. The debris lying around almost everywhere was from various houses that had been damaged. At the same time, the bird of prey flew away from Lai Wanwen's hiding place, flapping its huge wings powerfully. Tears appeared in Lai Wanwen's eyes. She looked stunned at the exit from the cave from which the bird had just flown away. She still continued to look there in surprise, and there were still tears in her eyes. 
Suddenly, a bird of prey poked its head into the entrance of her hiding place again. Red branched threads emanated from her eyes in different directions. The bird stubbornly continued to penetrate the shelter with its entire head, clenching its beak tightly. Lai Wanwen screamed in fear, opening her mouth wide and holding the red umbrella close to her. She put out her other hand, as if trying to protect it from a bird of prey. After some time, there were several more birds near her hiding place, which folded their powerful wings on their backs. They sat on the rubble of a destroyed building and carefully examined Lai Wanwen's hideout. At this time, the bird again climbed with its long brown claws over the destroyed slabs and opened its mouth threateningly. She carefully looked forward with her four eyes. With careful movements, the bird began to approach the very frightened Lai Wanwen. Lai Wanwen fearfully leaned her head against the stone behind her. She placed the umbrella between her stomach and legs, holding her arms forward for protection. She closed her eyes, accepting her future fate, which may have included her death. She clenched her fists and curled her lips, still waiting for her demise. The bird peered menacingly into the shelter and began to flap its wings attackingly. Her other comrades watched this carefully, without interfering in any way. Other birds flew in a small flock in the night sky. One of the birds flying in the sky made a sound and looked questioningly towards where Lai Wanwen was hiding. The bird, which penetrated the shelter not only with its head, but also with its body, opened its beak wide and reached out to Lai Wanwen, who was still closing her eyes. Lai Wanwen clenched her fists tighter, pressing herself harder into the slabs. Suddenly, a strange thread appeared in the sky, emanating from a far distance. It quickly approached the ruined city, where large-headed birds sat menacingly. The bird that tried to attack Lai Wanwen still continued to flap its wings majestically even while on the ground. In this way, she created a greater effect to intimidate Lai Wanwen. Shen Jinghong landed quickly on the ground. His sudden appearance sent a bright flash across the ground. He powerfully spread his arms and legs out to the sides for a stronger position so as not to fall when he landed. Shen Jinghong opened his mouth, starting to shout something. He furrowed his eyebrows with rage, directing his angry gaze forward. Raising his fist and jumping up, he began to approach the bird trying to penetrate Lai Wanwen's hiding place. A yellow-white glow emanated from his body in all directions, indicating his strong aura. A bright blue glow emanated from his other fist, which had very strong energy. The bird, not paying any attention to him, continued to climb into Lai Wanwen's hiding place. Shen Jinghong, still hanging in the air, cut off the bird's head with a slight movement. An unpleasant sound followed from this. The green blood of the bird completely splattered Lai Wanwen's entire shelter, as well as her hair, clothes, and completely all her skin. Lai Wanwen continued to clench her fists tightly, closing her eyes. Suddenly she opened it and looked ahead in shock. The green blood of a bird flowed down her face. In front of her lay the head of a bird, opening its huge beak. Lai Wanwen clenched her legs more tightly together and looked ahead in shock. The bird's head landed with a booming sound. Suddenly someone was heard screaming in the street for someone to die. Lai Wanwen opened her mouth in shock, seeing the bird's wing outside the shelter. She saw how the headless bird's body began to fly away from Shen Jinghong's strong kick, splashing the entire soil around with green liquid coming out from its open wound on the neck. Shen Jinghong was only 30 years old at that time. He stood and smiled smugly, looking slightly to the side. Lai Wanwen was currently 12 years old. She looked at him in shock, her mouth open. Shen Jinghong looked back at this time and noticed that behind him there was still a huge flock of birds flying here. He pursed his lips in displeasure. A moment later, a blue glow appeared from his hand, which began to go deeper into the soil in a straight line. More and more birds began to appear behind him. They flapping their wings majestically approached Shen Jinghong's back. Shen Jinghong suddenly waved his hand, which emitted a blue glow. He did it without any emotion. The bird that flew closest to him was cut in half. Green blood followed in all directions again. Shen Jinghong asked a question through clenched teeth out of intense rage. Did they exterminate an entire city? There was green bird blood on his clothes, which was viscous and did not flow off it. Lai Wanwen, with tears in her eyes, raised her fist to her shaking mouth and confirmed it. Another bird, 
putting out its huge paws with long claws, began to approach. She flapped her wings powerfully. Shen Jinghong slightly turned his head towards Lai Wanwen, feeling mixed feelings. Lai Wanwen pressed her fist to her mouth and looked at him dumbfounded, very worried. Shen Jinghong looked at her askance, turning his head a little more. Lai Wanwen pressed her two fists to herself and looked straight at him with worry. Tears began to appear in Shen Jinghong's eyes. He frowned, causing wrinkles to appear on his forehead. Suddenly he cursed. He angrily asked the question, Did these stupid four-eyed birds destroy an entire city of this great country? A bright, blinding red light appeared under his feet. It began to spread like a bright flash throughout the atmosphere. Shen Jinghong quickly moved away from the ground and flew straight towards the bird with four eyes hanging in the air. He thrust his fist forward and exclaimed that they were barbarians and foreigners who had invaded and were insulting his country. He added that they are ruining the lives of his compatriots and killing them on the spot. Shen Jinghong shouted all this with anger, continuing to approach the bird, still hanging above, with strong speed. Suddenly there was a strong explosion, from which fragments of destroyed buildings again began to fly in all directions. A huge wave of fire rose to a very far distance from the ground. All this was accompanied by a very loud sound that irritated the ears. Shen Jinghong was flying in the air at this time. Green blood began to spread abundantly in all directions from the four-eyed bird, which died. Several more birds began to approach Shen Jinghong, powerfully flapping their wings. The birds asked each other why his strength was so great. The other bird said in shock that it was a thousand times more powerful than the invading dwarves. The birds hovered above in surprise, slowly descending. They carefully watched Shen Jinghong flying without making any sound. At this time, Shen Jinghong angrily clenched his fist and began to utter obscene curses. He exclaimed several bad words, insulting the mother of the birds. Shen Jinghong clenched his fist angrily and exclaimed that they were all finished. Huge red energy began to spread from his body in all directions. It was all zigzag-shaped, forming a huge funnel. Suddenly one of the birds burst into flames. Another bird desperately tried to hide from this, but the flames immediately caught up with it. The bird began to screech desperately and fall down. Another bird, which was hit first by fire, helplessly began waving its clawed paws and screaming. Shen Jinghong stood in the whirlwind of fire and watched as all the birds, engulfed in flames, began to fall lifelessly down. One of the birds exclaimed in panic that his power was unstoppable, so they needed to get out of here quickly. She commanded in a trembling voice to open the portal, because they were retreating. Suddenly all the birds lit up with a white light and flew up. A white aura began to emanate from them in all directions, having a zigs-shaped appearance. Shen Jinghong still continued to hang in the air in the fiery funnel. Suddenly, a huge rectangle with a golden color appeared in the night sky. From this, bright and long yellow rays emanated in all directions. Shen Jinghong clenched his teeth angrily and directed his angry gaze forward. He frowned deeply, still remaining in the fiery vortex, and directed his furious gaze upward. Many four-eyed birds began to approach the portal, powerfully flapping their wings. They began to dissolve into a rectangular portal, golden in color. Shen Jinghong furiously shouted a question at them, do they want to escape? Huge flames still continued to emanate from him in all directions. He furrowed his brows angrily, directing his most menacing gaze forward. His hand turned white and the veins bulged out. Red flames emanated from the hand in all directions. Shen Jinghong began to move upward again, moving away from the fiery funnel. His cloak began to rise upward from a strong and sudden movement. Shen Jinghong, rising up, exclaimed that in the entire city of Ning Yuan, there were 11,000 completely unarmed civilians. He shouted furiously that another one that 500 soldiers were buried on their native soil. There were very deep wrinkles on the bridge of his nose from constant anger and rage. Fire was still emanating threateningly from his fist. Shen Jinghong added at this time that everything is not enough for everyone. Shen Jinghong shouted angrily. Fire began to spread abundantly from his fist. Small zigs shaped threads of fire appeared on Shen Jinghong's body, which had already spread almost throughout the air. Shen Jinghong began to approach the portal, from which bright rays emanated downwards. 
Lai Wanwen wrapped her arms around herself and lowered her umbrella. She looked up in fear. A few drops of the bird's green blood were still running down her face. She looked forward with hope, tears of despair welling up in her eyes. Lai Wanwen opened her mouth slightly, waiting for further developments. At this time, Shen Jinghong, putting his fist forward, began to approach the golden portal. He exclaimed, Explosion! From this, fire began to spread abundantly in all directions, forming a mushroom-shaped explosion. A deafening sound followed and spread throughout the entire atmosphere. The birds that did not have time to fly into the portal began to fall down lifelessly. Shen Jinghong was hanging in the air again, his energy emanating from him in waves in all directions. Lai Wanwen looked at him and asked the question, Is that strange bird that heard her grandmother dead? She looked stunned at Shen Jinghong looming in the sky. At this time, Shen Jinghong turned to her, clenching his fist. The fire still continued to spread from it. He continued to hover over the portal, which was all burning very brightly. At this time, Shen Jinghong said through tears that there was not a single one left. He looked down triumphantly. Lai Wanwen took the umbrella in her hands and began to slowly crawl out of the shelter, carefully looking around. Shen Jinghong landed neatly on his feet. His cloak was still flapping in the strong wind. Lai Wanwen clasped her hands together in prayer, placing the umbrella on her feet. She closed her eyes gratefully, as if she was trying to pray to Shen Jinghong. She continued to whisper the prayer with tears in her eyes, holding her two folded hands in prayer next to her. Shen Jinghong at this time said that he would end all this with his own hands, and this was regardless of the alien race. He looked forward menacingly and added that or the unused human race. He said that he would give her the opportunity to see her loved ones off to the next world. Lai Wanwen lowered her head down in gratitude, waving it a little. Sweat was dripping from her head and face. She had the green blood of a bird on her neck all this time. It lit up with a bright light, beginning to be absorbed very quickly into Lai Wanwen's skin. She pursed her lips warily, not saying anything. Suddenly, green stripes appeared in the middle of the heart, spreading around it. Through the heart and arteries, the green blood of the bird began to flow into the neck, and through the neck it entered the brain. Lai Wanwen opened her mouth in fear, starting to cry in despair. Suddenly she lost consciousness, falling lifeless to the ground. A red umbrella lay next to her. Some time later, through the black veil, Lai Wanwen heard someone's voice telling her to wake up or wake up. She opened her mouth and eyes in surprise, carefully searching for the source of the sound. She saw no one except the bright surface of the sky, on which cumulus white clouds sometimes floated. Lai Wanwen lay in the middle of the ground, clenching her fists. All her clothes were torn. She widened her eyes in shock when she heard a voice that said that she was now the only living soul in this world. Her red umbrella continued to lie next to her. Lai Wanwen leaned on one arm and sat down on the ground. She began to look around, noticing the same ruins of the destroyed city. She asked a question, looking at her torn clothes. Who is he? The voice said that several years ago, she became infected from Yun Niao's blood, but her body assimilated her blood. The same voice added, Thanks to this, the powers of the mountain and sea races awakened in her. A voice with a trapezoidal head spoke to her, in the middle of which two bright red eyes burned. At the borders of its head, Zig's shaped black threads spread out to the sides. This creature said that the gods of the mountains and oceans listened to their orders. This creature bent down slightly, and at the same time, the zigzag threads emanating from the borders began to move. He said that Lai Wanwen is quite good-natured and does not want war. He added, that's why she never gave them orders, but in a situation that threatened her life, they decided to take the initiative. The creature carefully looked forward with its red eyes and said, explaining, this is all to protect her. Suddenly, a snake with two horns appeared in front of Lai Wanwen. In addition, he had a red mane and gray scales. The snake introduced himself as Julong. He commands time. Lai Wanwen opened her eyes in shock. They looked lightly for abrasions and bruises on her body. At this time, Zhu Long, making strange swaying movements, said that the condition of her body was excellent, although this contained only one thread of his consciousness. With his red eyes flashing, he added that most of the power was under control. He regretted that the time distortion was only enough to save her alone. 
Lai Wanlin clutched the red umbrella to herself as she began to cry. She looked at it carefully and tears flowed freely from her eyes, which she could not control. Zhu Long added at this time that someone had blown up all the existing nuclear weapons in their world. He hovered over Lai Wanwan and said that she was the only survivor. He, almost with his whole body falling into the gray-white portal, wished her to be happy. Lai Wanwan wiped the tears from her face with her hands and added with a trembling voice that she would not see him again. She sadly repeated that she would not see him again. Suddenly, a huge red-clawed paw reached out to her. Lai Wanwan covered her mouth with her hand to prevent herself from crying loudly. Suddenly, the nail of a clawed paw touched her forehead with its sharp end. Lai Wanwan, not noticing this coming, still covered her mouth with her hand and closed her eyes. Ju Long smiled sarcastically, placing his other paw on his mouth and said, So that's what she's thinking about. Lai Wanwen stopped wiping away the tears running down her face. She took a strand of her pink hair with her hand and looked uncertainly to the side. After a moment, she desperately began to cry again and admitted that she wanted to meet him. Ju Long's eyes lit up an even brighter red. He looked at her carefully. After a moment, he closed his eyes and said that she only possessed a grain of his spiritual power. He is not sure whether he will be able to send her at that time. Half of Ju Long's torso was emerging from a gray and white portal. He immediately added that everything could also turn into inevitable death. Lai Wanwen continued to sit on the ground, clenching her fists, and carefully looking at Ju Long. She confidently pursed her lips and said through her tears that she was not afraid. She clenched her fists and sat as if in a fighting stance. Ju Long grinned, lifting his horned head up slightly. With his every movement, the portal began to glow with white light. Suddenly, one of the buildings in the city fell, overturning it with a huge wave, knocking down everything in its path. Lai Wanwen opened her mouth in shock. She stopped crying and looked forward in shock, still clenching her fists from tension. Ju Long stretched out his long red neck and looked to the side. White flames sparkled from his eyes, the tongues of which almost touched his sharp ears. Around him, golden sparks hovered in the air and sparkled brightly. Ju Long stretched out his red clawed paw to her and, flashing his eyes, sternly said that he might need several years of recovery for her journey alone. Such a return has its own price. Its existence in the current timeline will instantly end. This is a kind of forced delay of time. He's not exactly sure what else might happen. Then he looked sternly at her with a fiery gaze and asked the question, Is she really ready? Then he morally added that if she meets this guy, she shouldn't dare give up again. Lai Wanwen looked at him with her huge, tear-filled eyes and resolutely replied that she was ready and would definitely not regret it. Ju Long stretched his long neck forward, flashed his eyes, above which branched horns protruded from his head, and smiled. Lai Wanwen looked at the multi-story buildings of the Night City above which the moon and stars shone brightly. Golden sparks floated in the air, casting reflections. Suddenly the night city disappeared. Lai Wanwen looked in front of her in shock and saw only gray stains. Then, in place of this, multi-story buildings appeared to her eyes, with many people walking along the street between them. Men and women calmly went about their business, not paying attention to her. Lai Wanwen sat on the asphalt with her legs bent to her chest and holding a red umbrella in her hands. A crowd of people walked past her. She clasped her palms in front of her and looked ahead with concentration. As time passed, Lai Wanwen continued to look forward, afraid to even blink. Suddenly, among the passers-by, she saw a male silhouette in a dark cloak, from which a glow emanated. She joyfully opened her eyes and mouth. Then, looking closer, she saw that it was not Shen Jinghong, but a dark-haired man with a black beard. He approached her and worriedly asked the question, Is she okay? It was Hua Yaifengd, a four-star brigadier general. He was wearing a cloak with military general's shoulder straps. Lai Wanwen exhaled in disappointment and sadly said that, alas, it was not him. Hua Yaifeng called out to her. Lai Wanwen sat on the asphalt, pulling her legs to her chest and sadly clasping her knees with her hands. Hua Yaifeng said since she suddenly appeared here in front of him, she must also be a warrior. He smiled and said, If your strength has just awakened, don't panic. They are all warriors, and if she needs help. Lai Wanwen raised her huge eyes to him in surprise, 
looked at him with interest, and then lowered her gaze and said, let him help her find one person. Hua Yaifeng looked down at her in surprise. Lai Wanwen added that she would then help him in the war. He looked at her thoughtfully, his lips slightly stretched into a smile. Lai Wanwen raised her hand and put out her index finger, from which black flames appeared, from which violet light emanated. From her energy, Hua Yaifeng began to develop a cloak. He looked at her in surprise, waiting for further events. Lai Wanwen said that she could call them for help. A portal appeared in front of Hua Yaifeng, framed by a black frame with swirls. It glowed white, pink and purple, and spun in a spiral. Hua Yaifeng widened his eyes in surprise and asked a question, A portal? The portal expanded and became huge, glowing and spinning behind Lai Wanwen. Then the rotation stopped and against a dark blue background many glowing predatory eyes appeared, looking at him. Hua Yaifeng gaped in shock and thought that this was a summoning gift. Over time. Dark Street of the Night City. Lai Wanwen was having a mental conversation with herself. She thought she had been here for quite some time. After a long search, she finally found him. Hearing insults directed at him, she can understand, but let her calm down. Lai Wanwen was in front of the military logistics building. She closed her eyes tiredly, then opened them wide and listened. Lai Wanwen heard women's voices. This dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit was cheerfully telling her friends something. Lai Wanwen, hearing their conversation, resolutely clenched her hand into a fist and activated her magic portal, which, behind her, glowed with white waves on a burgundy black background. The blonde girl with short bangs on her forehead asked in surprise, Did Shen Jinghong really like her? She admitted that she couldn't believe it. Another girl with black hair and a round face, who stood nearby, squinted her eyes in disbelief and pointed her index finger at the dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit, and said doubtfully that indeed, even if senior disciple Shen refused the army, it was strange, although before that he was quite proud. The dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit was stung by their disbelief and, opening her mouth wide, shouted irritably that they might not believe her. They don't know the whole truth. Then she paused meaningfully and said that who else, if not she, knows best what kind of animal he is. The girls let out a shocked exclamation. One of them, with dark hair and bangs on her forehead, even covered her mouth with her palm to muffle her loud exclamation. They all looked at the person who said it in shock, trying to comprehend this information. The girl with short dark hair took out her smartphone in anticipation and turned on the video mode. She smiled maliciously expecting disgusting details, and impatiently told her to quickly tell her in more detail, they want to know it. The girl standing next to her winced with contempt. One said she couldn't find the words and couldn't imagine how disgusting it was. Another, crossing her arms, said that she had no idea that Shen Jinghong was such a person. There was a video on the cell phone screen in which a dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit, shedding bitter tears and snot, said through sobs that he was drunk then and she brought him educational materials. Then she sobbed harder and more dramatically, clenching her fists. Tears flowed from her eyes in streams. A clear liquid flowed from her nose, dripping onto her chin. A girl with dark hair and teeth like a rabbit sobbed, chokingly that after the incident she immediately went to the inspectorate to expose him. She paused, and then said that Shen Jinghong refused to join the army because he had a criminal record. The girl standing opposite her gaped in shock and exclaimed in surprise. The short-haired, dark-haired girl smiled maliciously and thought that she now finally understood the pride of this imperial university and the reason why Shen Jinghong refused to join the army. She opened a social network on her phone and with a malicious smile thought that she should quickly upload this, let everyone know the truth. She quickly pressed something with her finger on the screen of her cell phone, and there appeared in large black letters a headline that said, Shen Jinghong Exposed. The real reason for refusing the army. Under this title was a video of a girl with dark hair and teeth like a rabbit crying. She continued to cry and scream that Shen Jinghong was a freak. The girls standing opposite supported her and resolutely clenched their fists and also began shouting that Shen Jinghong was a freak. Lai Wanwen, who was standing on the monster's head, heard these conversations. Behind her, the portal glowed with wide white, black and burgundy stripes. At this time, one of the girls shouted invitingly, Go ahead. She called for everyone to kill Shen Jinghong. 
Lai Wanwen clenched her fists fiercely, glared in their direction, and activated her magical energy. Gray magical waves emanated from her body. She heard the voice of Ju Long, who, with flashing red eyes, sadly said that, alas, he had overestimated human nature. Seeing her determination and anger, he added that it was pointless to calm her down. Blue-white light poured out from the summoning portal in a bright pillar. At this time, a dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit, wiping away tears with her fists, sadly told her friends not to be embarrassed and forward this video. It won't hurt her feelings. On the contrary, she wants everyone to know what a freak Shen Jinghong is. The girls, holding cell phones in their hands, looked at the screens with an angry expression on their faces. Suddenly, a bright pillar of blue-white light hit the dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit right in the face. A moment later, she was lying on the ground, her arms and legs raised up. The skirt rode up, exposing her thighs. On top of it sat a gray animal with a long tail. It was an alien rat sniper. She stood on this girl's face, her fiery eyes sparkling predatorily. A girl with dark hair and teeth like a rabbit cowardly bulged her eyes and reached out with her hands towards the rat, shouting what is this? Let him get away. The girls stood in shock and looked at this with their mouths open. They were in no hurry to help her. The sniper rat opened its mouth, showing off its sharp teeth. A moment later, she sank her teeth into the face of a dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit. Blood gushed in all directions. She screamed heart-rendingly in pain, spreading her arms to the sides and lowering her legs to the asphalt. Her scream was heard throughout the military rear area. The girls with whom she had recently discussed Shen Jinghong ran away in cowardice. They ran in all directions, into the scattered grass, screaming in fear. No one even thought to help her. Lai Wanwen stood in the middle of the courtyard and calmly watched them run away cowardly. One of the girls shouted a warning for her to run away faster. Lai Wanwen stood and looked ahead, magic rays emanating from her body. At this time, the rat sniper continued to gnaw the face of a dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit. She desperately tried to escape and screamed loudly. Lai Wanwen walked up to her and watched as she helplessly raised her arms and legs, trying to free herself from the rat. Lai Wanwen stretched out her hand and used her magical power to pull the rat. The rat sniper gained considerable weight, having had his fill of the flesh of a dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit. She lay on the ground and screamed heart-rendingly, clutching her wounded face. One of her eyes was bloodshot. Lai Wanwen looked at her calmly, then activated the portal behind her which was currently glowing with a purple light with white thin zigzag stripes. She threw the rat in there. A girl with dark hair and teeth like a rabbit was shaking in fear as she lay on the ground. She angrily spread her palms to the side and asked the question, Who else is she? Then she furiously screamed that she was finished. The dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit offered to fight, and if anything happened to her, Chen Jinghong would not just let her go. She tried to get up, but her body was shaking from fear. She said that Shen Jinghong is her boyfriend. Then she asked whether Lai Wanwen would have the courage to touch what belonged to him. Lai Wanwen thought about it. Then, taking a step to the side, she turned around and walked away. A dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit heard footsteps and realized that she was leaving. A dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit stared angrily in front of her with one remaining eye. The other eye was closed due to bloody scratches. There were bloody marks from the teeth of a rat on his cheek. Lai Wanwen turned around and looked at the crippled dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit. She stared at her with both eyes, one of which was covered in blood. Then she got down on all fours, bowed her head and desperately shouted that she was wrong. She was wrong. Her skirt became wet. Some liquid flowed down her legs, forming a yellow puddle on the asphalt. She desperately begged Lai Wanwen not to kill her. Lai Wanwen looked at her and sternly told her not to say a word about Shen Jinghong again. A dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit and a scarred face desperately said that she would not do it again. Lai Wanwen believed her and walked away. As she approached the brightly lit door of the girl's dormitory, the dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit exhaled in relief. With a shaking hand, she took out her cell phone and pressed the red emergency call button. She lay helplessly on the ground in a puddle of yellow liquid and, shaking with fear, heard a voice on the phone that said it was the General Bureau of Investigation. 
The voice asked the question, does she need help? She clenched her fist, slammed the ground decisively, and said that she was reporting that Shen Jinghong privately deployed the military, established power, and intended. The voice on the phone asked, Shen Jinghong, who is this? Does she have proof? The dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit fell desperately onto the asphalt and shouted that it was the news star, Shen Jinghong, who refused to join the army. She spoke negatively about him, and a group of people calling themselves Shen Jinghong's guards attacked her. The voice on the phone said that they would draw up a report on this case. She looked at the screen of her phone and angrily screamed for them to investigate this incident. But first they sent doctors to save her. Then let Chen Jinghong be immediately arrested and sentenced. The face of the dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit turned into an angry grimace, scarred and bloody. Suddenly someone put a foot in a boot with a long heel on her face. She desperately asked, who again? Ling Qiu pressed her foot to her head and took away her cell phone. She put it to her ear and said that the captain of the third division, the second team, Ling Qiu was in touch. State number 11562. They can check at any time. Ling Qiu said that this was a student prank. Please don't worry, she will sort it out. The dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit looked at her in despair, shaking with fear. Ling Qiu interrupted the phone conversation and thought that he had been humiliated twice this evening precisely because of this girl's gossip. She angrily squeezed the cell phone in her palm. It shattered into small pieces. Ling Qiu angrily threw the pieces of the phone aside, which hit the asphalt noisily. The dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit said in despair that Shen Jinghong had just sent someone to attack her. Let her report it and he'll be dead. Let all the glory be to her. Ling Qiu remained silent meaningfully, then kicked her with all her might in her high-heeled boot. Drops of blood scattered in all directions. Ling Qiu towered over the defeated girl with teeth like a rabbit. She then took out her cell phone, dialed a number, and ordered that the entrance to the women's dormitory in Zone Z be dealt with. She firmly ordered that they take all necessary measures and delete all articles about Shen Jinghong. Let them tell their superiors not to let anyone near him, or it will be their omission. She added through clenched teeth that any disobedience would affect the dignity of the entire army. A voice came from the phone saying that the media was no longer under their control. Several new news about Shen Jinghong blew up the entire internet in just a few minutes. Ling Qiu widened her eyes in shock when she heard this. The voice from the phone suggested that she take a look at it herself. She opened the news feed on her cell phone and read the headline that was on top of a video of a dark-haired girl with rabbit teeth sobbing. It was written there that this was an expose. The real reason Shen Jinghong refused to join the army. Ling Qiu read this and said that this cannot be true. She pressed the button to play the video with her neatly manicured finger. From the cell phone screen came the voice of a dark-haired girl with teeth like a rabbit, who said that Shen Jinghong raped her. Ling Qiu looked at the girl's bloody body in shock. She swung her leg and kicked the headless body with all her might, which flew far to the side, staining the asphalt with blood. Ling Qiu angrily looked at the body that was lying motionless to the side. She picked up her cell phone, looked at the screen and was shocked to see a message from the access point. It was written there that the military said that they would eliminate undisciplined teams. A four-star brigadier general will personally teach the manners of freaks like Shen Jinghong. Ling Qiu thought in despair that this was it. Her rank is too low for anyone to pay attention to the loss. If the general loses in the public eye, then no one will ever want to join the army. A voice came from the phone asking if she had read the news. Ling Qiu turned around and replied that she had not read to the end. A voice from the phone said that there was something worse. Some people have started organizing a joint petition. Ling Qiu held the phone to her ear and walked decisively along the asphalt road. The voice on the phone warned that they should be prepared to kick Shen Jinghong out of the interracial logistics office. She took out the gold card and looked at it. A golden glow emanated from the card. Ling Qiu swung the hand she was holding. An energy portal opened in front of her. She said on the phone that it was time to use the Lin family's privilege to convince Mr. Jang and ask for his help in this situation. She stood and looked at the dark blue portal with purple highlights, then ordered into her cell phone that they ask the authorities to evacuate the people without creating noise. 
This Shen Jinghong is special. Let them not ask anything or interfere. A voice from the phone said that their employees were already involved. They all wanted Shen Jinghong dead and were unwilling to cooperate to calm the crowd. Ling Qiu glanced sideways at the headless body of the dark-haired girl and remained silent meaningfully. She then approached the portal and told them to deal with the body first. Let them throw it away. Then she decisively took a step forward and the portal disappeared. After some time, Shen Jinghong walked along the night road, holding a red umbrella. He approached the military rear building, from which the aircraft were flying off. He looked carefully ahead. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Ling Qiu appeared behind him in a tight space suit. She stood among the debris of the road that appeared from her powerful landing. Ling Qiu called his name. He looked over his shoulder in surprise and saw a rectangular object flying towards him. Shen Jinghong deftly caught it with two fingers. Ling Qiu said, although she is not sure of his intentions, he really does not belong here. This is her ID card. He can live with her for now. He turned his head to her and remained thoughtfully silent. Ling Qiu, turning away from him, embarrassedly told him not to worry about her. She will not return until she is able to defeat him. Shen Jinghong looked at her with a smile and said, Thank you. After a while, he approached the brightly lit door of the girl's dormitory and went inside. The clock showed twelve o'clock. He leaned Ling Qiu's golden ID card against the scanner and the elevator doors swung open. Shen Jinghong stood in the elevator and thought that he finally had a private space where no one would disturb him. He said system check. The alert said, The system prompted that the divine killing of hundreds had reached level 5 progress by 1%. You can unlock a second talent. The system asked him to make a choice. He closed his eyes and the download speed was much faster than expected. Even if the speed slows down with subsequent improvement, with the help of the system, even a month is enough to return to the top. The system informed him that he had three skills to choose from. The first skill is taming any animal for personal use. Second, creating a formation to kill spirits, you need to create more formation to destroy aliens. Third, the skill of turning spirits into personal warriors, receiving their power and ability to recreate the world. Shen Jinghong pressed the button with the numbers 33 on the elevator panel with his index finger. His eyes lit up with a decisive fire, and he replied that he was choosing the third. The system notified that a new ability, Spirit Control, had been selected. Yingling can only be summoned once. Yingling is the call of the soul of an already deceased outstanding person. Button 33 on the elevator panel lit up. The elevator stopped. Shen Jinghong said with a smile, Call. A glowing white portal opened behind him. The elevator space was filled with blue energy flows. Shen Jinghong looked in front of him, where the white circles were glowing brightly. He clicked on one of the circles and it began to expand, visually becoming similar to the solar system. A tall silhouette of a large man appeared from the glowing white ball in front of Shen Jinghong. The notification said that it brings its congratulations on receiving the server award. The elevator doors opened and Shen Jinghong took a step forward. He looked around with delight and said that Ling Qiu's housing turned out to be not a dorm room at all, but an entire floor of the building. Shen Jinghong walked out of the elevator with a dark figure standing behind him. The man in the raincoat jumped high into the air and landed noisily in front of the glass of a large panoramic window. Through the transparent glass one could see a man with long black hair in knight's armor. He looked through the glass at the multi-story buildings of the night city, which was illuminated by many lights. He asked the question, is this their world? Shen Jinghong took a few steps towards him and replied that it was his, but it also belonged to him. The future still belongs to the sons and daughters of great powers. The dark-haired man with a mustache closed his eyes thoughtfully and was silent. Three pictures appeared on the energy screen in front of him. The first picture showed a large city located on the shore of a reservoir. A large and beautiful city with tall buildings burned brightly with many lights. A multi-lane transport road stretched across the center, along which various types of transport drove, illuminating the road with bright headlights. Across the road on the shore, there was an embankment where many people walked. The second painting showed snow-capped mountains rising majestically against a pink and orange sunset sky. On the third, it was a clear day, 
with mountains rising against the blue sky. In the lowland, between the mountains, a mountain river flowed, on the banks of which were green fields with crops. The knight looked at this with delight and said that he could not imagine the world being so prosperous. Such a variety of times. Wow. He turned to face Shen Jinghong, his eyes glowing with white light. White energy streams emanated from his body in powerful armor. The system reported that he was the warlord Ran Min, a Chinese folk hero called Yang Zhen, the founder of the Ran Wai regime during the 16 Barbary States period, better known for his outstanding intelligence and extraordinary courage. 2,000 years ago, he received the Order of Two, who during an alien invasion that plundered the Central Plains. Anyone who dared to raise weapons was destroyed. He accomplished the feat of destroying 2,000 people out of 3,000. The system showed a picture where Jean Men was sitting astride a dark stallion, holding a sharp spear above him. The horse reared up, but Jan Min easily sat in the saddle. Shen Jinghong thought in shock that Ran Min had led 3,000 cavalrymen to strike the enemy from 3,000 miles away. And when he presented the sword to Sanchai, not a single representative from the next three generations could forget this achievement. Shen Jinghong gaped in shock, and Ran Min said that young people should not be so careful. Since he was called here, he will help him. Shen Min went to the chest of drawers, on which there were framed photographs. He took one of them which depicted a man in a dark turtleneck. Jan Min said that after a thousand years, portraits can be made so realistic. He looked at the photo of a dark-haired man with a proud look and a strong chin. Ran Min noisily put the photo frame back on the chest of drawers and asked Shen Jinghong if there were still people praying to him. He replied no. Shen Jinghong thought that even though Ran Min's achievement shines day and night, his popularity has faded. Probably, in their inexhaustible history, such heroes have long been forgotten. Ran Min turned his head to him and asked hopefully, Is there anyone else in this great country who praises him? Shen Jinghong looked at the bottles on the table with interest and said that the crimes of the Heavenly King were too serious for anyone to speak well of. Heavenly King, an honorary title for leaders during the era of the 16 barbarian states. Jian Ming frowned and looked at him in disappointment. Shen Jinghong added that even a small mention of him still causes scolding. Jan Min listened to him in shock, his mouth open in surprise. He said with resentment that he had killed so many aliens for the sake of the people of this world. After all this, he was left with nothing. Shen Jinghong opened a white and red bottle and began to pour some white liquid into a transparent glass. Shen Jinghong replied that not really. He remembers. Someone will always remember. If not for this fateful battle of the Heavenly King, the spark of great powers would have gone out thousands of years ago. Jan Min looked at him thoughtfully and exhaled desperately. He went to the window, looked at the city at night, and said that he no longer existed in this world. Then he concluded that he needed a drink. The two of them stood near a large panoramic window and looked at the city at night, illuminated by bright lights. Ran Min summed up that he and Shen Jinghong have one goal and one path but they are still at different stages. Shen Jinghong looked at him sadly, searching for the right words. Shen Ming understood this and said that he could hold back his words of consolation. But first he will get a scolding. Shen Ming patted him on the shoulder and laughed cheerfully. Shen Jinghong tensed, holding a transparent glass with white liquid in his hand. The knight smelled it and said it was good alcohol. What a pity that he can't get drunk enough with him. Then he laughed cheerfully. Shen Jinghong said that he respected Ran Min very much and poured the white liquid from his glass onto the floor. Shen Min extended his hand to the side, making a warning gesture. He said there was no need for this false politeness anymore. He watches as the aliens standing on the border of their great country mock the memory of the fallen warriors. Shen Min assured that he would do everything possible to kill them all. Then he resolutely shouted that there will always be kings here who die for their people.